the ball game now. He's newcomer of the year in the Southland Conference. Had a great year this year for the Colonel. Third down and about five. Handoff on to Tobias once again. This time he gets mugged in the middle. Freeman was there. Andrew Jones was there for the Paladins. And Berman plays the dive play in excellent fashion. You're playing against a, an option team like this. It's entirely option football. Or assignment football, I should say. Most certainly is. And, of course, the number one thing in the option is stopping the first option through. That's the fullback. Did a good job that time on Tobias. This is Alex Romero trying a 39-yarder. Romero gets his foot into it, and it's good. So the turnover gives Nichols State three points. They lead the Paladins of Furman here in the first quarter by a 3-0 count. In 2005, UTC head coach John Schulman led the Mox to a Southern Conference Tournament Championship and the program's first NCAA berth since 1997. The basketball mox take on the Golden Gophers of Minnesota Saturday at 4, only on CSS. You know, Chuck, Bobby Lamb's got to be pleased with his defense on that possession. They give Nickel State the football after the Belton fumble deep in Furman territory. Do not give Nickel State an opportunity to advance it. Don't get a first down. They do get the field goal and get on the board first, but a really good job so far by the Furman defense. Ting the football up will be Romero. Romero alternates place kicking duties with Ross Sheck Snyder. And that time it was Romero who came in and knocked through the 39 yard field goal. That's Alex Romero. Romero, a sophomore from Hanville, Louisiana, transferred from LSU to the Nickel State program. Well, LSU with a big win over Arkansas wins a shot at the SEC title game against Georgia. Here's the figures on the scoring drive. As we said, that was Romero who kicked the field goal, not Sheck Snyder. And Romero ready to kick it off. It's going to come down to Derek Carter at the 20. And Carter gets tattooed, squirts forward, and takes it out to the 36. Derek Carter. Tackle by Dwayne Jones. <laughs> so Furman will set up shop first down 10 at their own 36 yard line. You see Carter having a big year catching the football. He's got 25 receptions for three touchdowns. He's also rushed for 641 yards and scored eight touchdowns on the ground. Yeah, he is a definite threat out of the backfield, either running the football or catching passes from Ringo Martin. Furman really needs to make something happen after fumbling on their first snap last time. Jerome Felton with that fumble. He very seldom fumbles a football. Here's Carter. He's going to get knocked down at the 34-yard line for a two-yard loss. Strong safety Tony Edison was waiting on that one. Really good job of Nickel State here screaming out, bringing out the toss sweep to Carter. You saw Carter had no help on the corner. Got knocked down for a loss. So Furman not doing anything on offense right now. A fumble and now negative play. Second down, 12 yards to go. Ingle Martin transferred from the University of Florida and set all kinds of records for the Furman Paladins. One shy of the career touchdown mark. Martin with pretty good speed. Going to throw underneath, throws it away. Third down and 12 yards to go from the 34. That time he was getting pressure from Nathan Stewart who picked up that fumble a moment ago and Rushed it into scoring position for Nichols State. Really a good, what we call a coverage stab by Nichols State. Engel Martin had plenty of time to throw the football that time. The offensive line gave him the time, but uh, just could not find any options and ended up just tossing it out of bounds there. Bobby Lamb looking on, now in his fourth year as head coach of the Furman Paladins. An excellent 33 and 14 record, but feels he has something to prove in the playoffs. His team's only one and two in playoff action. Out of the shotgun, Martin going to throw pass incomplete and intercepted. Falling straight up in the air, and the middle linebacker Corey Babala yeah. comes up with it. That's his 
Fourth interception of the year. You see Martin stick it right in here to Steph, his favorite receiver, and got hit from behind the ball, popped straight up in the air, and Babala made the interception. Tony Edison delivered the hit. You can see it again, great hit by Edison. Steph goes upside down, and then Nickel State, their second turnover of the day, and again, they're in great field position inside the Furman territory. It appeared that the hit may have come just a little bit early from the strong safety Tony Edison, but not ruled interference, so first down 10 at the Furman 46. Handoff going to Big Cole, and he pounds the middle, gets a couple down to the 42-yard line. William Freeman makes the stop. William Freeman, the defensive captain of the Furman Paladins, all Southern Conference selection for the second time. He was Southern Conference defensive player of the year last year, and uh, he is the in inspirational leader, emotionally for the defense. Second down, seven yards to go. Ball at the 43-yard line. Vanoy going to keep this time, and he gets met at the 39-yard line by Wesley Bray, who really put the hammer on him. That may have been Freeman, not Bray. Yep, I think Bray Freeman's going to come off a block. He makes a good read, and he gets Vanoy. Gets off the ground. You can see him right there. Got off the ground, got blocked, knocked down, got off the ground, made the tackle. So Freeman, back-to-back -back plays here for Furman. So another big third down possession coming up for the Colonel. Third down, four yards to go. Freeman. Nickel State averaging, averaging just less than three yards a pop. So they call timeout to talk over this third down situation. Still no score. Just underway. Furman and Nickel State on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. At Wolf Camera, it's all about extra value. David Rick. The Furman offense trying to figure out what's the prop problem. They have turned it over a couple of times here early in the game, and this is a big play for the Colonel. Handoff going to the fullback, Cole, and he's not going to reach the first down marker. Picked up about three, Andrew Jones making the stop on Broderick Cole. Cole, 230 pounds, the sophomore from West Jefferson High School in New Orleans. That ball is right at the marker, Chuck. I think the officials are going to take a long look at it here. And they're probably going to bring it out in measure. It's going to be right at the marker. Look, Broderick Cole, we said, has a big year for the Colonels. 148 rushes, 696 yards, led them in touchdowns with 13 and I think Jay Thomas, if it is short, they'll go for it right here. And looks like he got it by the nose of the football. He did, first down, Colonel. Furman fans unhappy. You might hear them in the background booing a little bit. They thought the uh, Colonel's got a generous spot there. Looked like Furman had stopped it short, but with the placement of the ball, Colonels have a big first down and the drive's alive. So first down 10, the ball at the 36-yard line. Berman, a base 4-3 defense. And here's the option. Quick pitch going to the outside. That was Joel Fontenot Amity on the carry. Good job here by the corner. Maurice Duncan stringing the play out and uh, totally negligible game. He only got about three yards. First time we've seen Nickel State pitch the ball today, which is the third option out of the triple option offense. There's uh, slot backs are huge. Fontano on it. He 210 pounds. Zach Morgan goes about 200 pounds. Second down and seven. And there's a pitch to Amity Fontano once again. He's knocked down. Nice play that time by Roy Ravenel. He horse collars Fontano Amity. Great job here by Roy Ravenel just pursuing the play. You see his speed on the corner. Can't Fontano can't outrun Ravenel. He just kind of horse collars him. Also, good job by Bray tackling the quarterback. And everybody had everybody covered that time pretty much. So another third down, big third down coming up for the Colonel. Third down and five yards to go. You have one wide out, that's Kenley Horton. The bottom of your screen, and there we go. This is the option, the quick pitch. And on the carry, it's Zach Morgan. Morgan didn't get much. Good job here by the Furman secondary. Riley, the strong safety coming up, backer coming off a block, and 
they're going to be short, so decision time for Jay Thomas. Probably maybe a little long for a field goal, so probably it's going to line up and go for it here on fourth down. Well, they've tried it 18 times, or rather 23 times on the season. They've been successful, 18 of them. Pretty good so, percentages. Yeah, he likes to roll the dice. You see a, the second-year head coach, Jay Thomas of Nichols State. Big play for the Furman defense right up here. If they can turn Nichols State away, and Jay Thomas wants to talk about this play. They're going to call a timeout. Their second charge, timeout. They're going to burn their second timeout, so they have. And talk this fourth down and two yards to go over. Usually when a team calls a timeout after sending a play and their coaches upstairs say, wait a minute, based on the personnel Furman seems to have on the field, that's not the right play, so they want to talk about it. This is a, just a big play for both teams. Furman's had two offensive possessions. They've had two turnovers the first time. Furman defense did a good job. Made Nickel State settle for the field goal. This time after the pass interception off the tip, they've driven down inside the Furman 30 with a fourth down. So Furman defense looking to make a statement again and turn Nickel State away. So I think Jay Thomas was a good timeout for him because he realizes this is critical for his offense to try to make a first down and keep this drive going because they've had two opportunities here, Chuck, off turnovers. And the... Scoreboard says fourth down and two yards to go, but it is a long two yards. Ball at the 29-yard line, and they have to reach the 26 to get the first down. Last time on short yardage, they gave it to their big fullback, Broderick Cole, and he picked it up. So he'll probably be the first option. Obviously, the first option, again, out of the triple option, but Oi will read it and hope. For the Colonels, they're hoping that Cole will have just enough of crack to get the first down. Meanwhile, Furman's going to try to stand up and turn him away. Van Oy brings his folks to the line of scrimmage. Here's the option. Van Oy keeps, and Van Oy picks up the first down on foot down as he takes it down to the 25-yard line. A really good read here by... Vanoy, he looked like the fullback was going to be stuffed, so he kept it on the second option. The safety comes over, but this gets there late. Got there a little bit late, and a big first down by the Colonel. Their drive still moves along as they're now about the 25-yard line of Furman. First round playoff action, the Furman Paladins and Nickel State Colonels meeting for the first time ever. As you can see, Nickel State with the lead. There's Cole again. To the middle he goes. And he's going to take it down to the 21-yard line. Carried by number eight, Roderick Cole. Roderick Cole, on the play by a sophomore Andrew Jones. from New Orleans. And Andrew Jones on the stop for the Paladins. And Nickel State is doing what, the firm, what Georgia Southern did three weeks ago when Georgia Southern had that big win over Furman. They're just keep playing keep away. They're using their ground control offense to keep Furman's high-powered offense led by Andrew Martin on the sideline. So Nickel State has been on the field almost the entire first quarter here with their offense. Furman lost that game at uh, Georgia Southern. There's a reverse as a quick pitch it to Kenley Horton going the other way. He is running out of room quickly, and down he goes for a two-yard loss. Wesley Bray was there as he ran it down from behind. They try to reverse to Kenley Horton. Here on the play by number 80, Kenley Junior Horton. from College Park, Georgia, to watch the play it again. Good 20, job Gary here, too, Hill. by Wallace Artis, the defensive end, who does not get suckered by by the motion because everything comes to the right they reverse it back to the left and he stayed home and, and got some help from the secondary and there you see Jones one of the leading tacklers the leading tackler as a matter of fact for the Paladins making the stop so third down and seven yards to go here and a handoff onto the fullback into the secondary he goes down to the six yard line on the dive play that's Joseph Tobias and he's going to give him first and goal at about the six, watch it again. Most teams you think third and eight definite passing situation, but not with the number two rushing team in the nation. This time they get Tobias just enough of a crack against the middle of that Furman defense, and he got a, just a tremendous push by his offensive line, got a big first down inside the Furman 10. First down and goal to go. Nichols State trying to add to their lead. The handoff this time going to Tobias again. He takes it to about the two and a half by yard 32, line. Joseph Tobias. Tackled, Tackled by on the play by William Shelton Freeman. Riley. And William Freeman was also there. Yeah, you talked earlier about the Nichols State offensive line, Chuck, and they are very, very good. Got three all-conference players on there. The tackle, Joseph Bender, the guard, Benjamin Goomsbach. 
Goombazi and the center, Cody Stogger. So some big beef up front. And they like to run behind them. Handoff going once again to Joseph Tobias. He is thrown the other way. Little or no gain coming up to make that play. Gary, was number 32, Gary Nelson. Tobias. Tackled by 41, and Andrew Van Bro was also there along with Andrew Jones. Watch it again. Third down and Pickle goal. State's going to try to get a one. good push in the middle here. They don't really get it. Furman really beat him off the football. You can see the Furman purple showing up right there and pushing Tobias back. So third and go for Nickel State trying to get on the board again. They're already three to nothing. Here. First one there was Gary Nelson. And uh, going to the fullback, Tobias once again, and nothing. He stretches ahead. Down he goes, William Freeman and company close down the middle, and Tobias goes down. It's going to be fourth down and about a yard to go. Just a great job here by the Furman defensive front. They try to run Tobias inside again, and again, the Furman defensive line just stands up and will not let him get in the end zone. Just a really good job there. Bray, one of the first guys there. He's out of Cave Springs, Georgia. Fourth, fourth and go. They're going for it. No field goal. And off. Uh, on to the fullback. And he is going to be down inside the one-yard line. Great play by Andrew Becker and Shelton Riley. The two safeties combined to stop Big Tobias, six inches from the goal line. Watch it again. What a tremendous job by the Furman defense. You can see, cool. looks like Cole's going to get in the end zone, but you can see the knee clearly come down. This before, watch there, somebody on the backside, Andrew Jones blitzing, just knocked the knees out from under Broderick Cole. Furman defense celebrating, and, and well, they should, Chuck. That was just a huge stand by the defense. Now the offense has to go 99 yards to get Furman back in this game offense. They'll take that option. <laughs> they will. Furman did have a 99-yard drive, their longest of the season in their first game against Jacksonville State. You see the time of possession heavily in favor of Nichols State and the handoff going to Felton, who takes it down to about the three-yard line. Yeah, Furman running there only their fifth offensive play of the entire game as first quarter is under three minutes now. And it's very important here for Furman to at least get some first downs and move the ball out of the shadow of their goalpost because the defense has been on the field almost the entire first quarter. And this quarter has flown by. Not surprisingly, because of the ground game of Nickel States. Here's Martin going to throw underneath. Pass complete to Felton. At the 10, he lowers his head, takes it out to the 15. Jade Crane rolls into the station, and Furman has the first down. Besides being a tremendous pressure, Felton's also a good pass receiver out of the background. They run the waggle route. They just put Felton out of the flat. You can see he's just wide open. Ingle Martin dumps it off to him for a big first down. Jerome Felton, 17 receptions on the year for 132 yards and two touchdowns. 16-yard pass play gets Furman out of jail. First down and 10 yards to go. That was more like a 11-yard pass play. They start to run the option. Here's Ingle Martin thrown back to the weak side. He's going to overthrow everyone. Intended for John Rusk at the 40-yard line. Pass intended for Martin number 81, with too much John arm Rusk. on that one. Running John Rust on, run him on a deep crossing pattern here. And Second down and ten. Normally, when you run that pattern, but especially with the quarterback going away, the receiver will get much more separation that time. But the cornerback Henry Johnson really had good coverage. Market at the 14-yard line. Second down and 10 yards to go. Furman down three zip late in the first quarter. Cedric Gibson in a tailback now for Furman. And here's Gibson trying to bounce outside. Takes it to the 20-yard line. A gain of six. We'll bring up third down and four yards to go. One of the favorite plays by the Furman offense. It was just the tailback right off tackle. Following his good quarterback, Jerome Felton. Like third down, very doable now. you got some options on third and five. Brian Pyle, one of their big defensive ends, makes the stop. Seven seniors starting on defense. Third down and State. four. For the Pyle, all, all South End Conference selection. Martin will run the option. Quick pitch. And we have a flag down. We have... Gibson down at about the 31-yard line, but check the flag. 
Yeah, Tony would. Edison knocked him out of bounds. They're going to call holding on Brian Lagus, I think. Yep, Brian Lagus was the one leading with the referee, but uh, here comes the call now. Holding on the offense, number 72, half a distance to the goal, repeat third down. Berman particularly strong with those three interior linemen, the left guard, Brian Lagus, Corey Stewart, the center, and Patrick Covington, who was consensus All-Southern Conference pick this week. Those three have started a ton of games for Coach Bobby Lamb. Yeah, and uh, Lagus also the second team All-Southern Conference. I think Corey Stewart was the first team. Yep, sure was. So wipe out the first down. Furman will face third and 14 now. The ball at the nine-yard line, and Martin will go from the shotgun. There's a blitz. Going to throw it underneath. Carter going to get knocked out at about the six, and Furman's going to have to punt from the end zone here. On the play, Nathan Stewart was all over Derek Carter. Norman, when you come from the blitz, the screen pass is an excellent call here, but the linebacker, Nate Stewart, unaccounted for. He just came through clean and made the clean tackle on Carter, so Furman going to have to punt from the back of their end zone. Ingo Martin lead the Southern Conference in punting with a 43.1 yard per punt average. He was the subject of a column yesterday by Greenville writer Bart Wright. And Wright noticed that Martin has also outpunted everyone in the NFL. There is a how about a 70 yarder. It's going to roll dead at the 25 yard line. We'll take a break and come back. Berman trailing Nichols State here. 3 0 Division One AA playoff action on CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. Campus of Furman University in Greenville, South Carolina. 3 0 your score. Nichols State leading Furman here late in the first quarter. That 70 yard punt a moment ago by Ingle Martin matches his career high. That came when he was at the University of Florida. That was a 70 yarder against Ole Miss and the fifth longest in Florida history. There's a pass on first down. Throwing it up, and the ball is caught at the 35 yard line. Going up to make the grab was Michael Akaronko. Yeah, when you say throwing it up, that's exactly what Bonoy does here. He just throws the ball just up deep and high. It's a jump ball. And Akaronko is 6-4. And the man guarding him, Maurice Duncan, is 5'8". Yep, and Akaronko definitely got the best of that jump ball with a huge completion by Nickel State. They're in business again in Furman territory. Here they go. Michael Akronakwe. It's a broadcaster's nightmare there. Just a quick stoppage of play just momentarily while they reset the 25-second clock. Now they're going to stop it again. Only two seconds to go in the first quarter, and they keep trying to make adjustments on the 25-second clock, and now the officials are going to huddle up and talk about it. That pass covered 40 yards. Yale Van Oy to Michael Akronakwa. And it's first down 10 at the Furman 35-yard line. Nickel State does not have to run a play here if they don't want to, and I don't think they do. I think they're just going to sit here and watch the clock run out when the first quarter's going in. Final seconds tick away. And ball control, the name of the game. Nickel State, margin in charge in that category. Sir Paladin, not much to celebrate so far as Furman trails here 3 0 on CSS. Giving, so it's a pep band approach today for the Paladins as they play on here. Their Paladins going in the first round of the Division One AA playoffs against Nickel State. Nickel State has moved the football. They lead it three nothing. Furman's had one huge goal line stand. Vanoy, the quarterback for Nickel State, he's going to run the option. Quick pitch and knocked out of bounds will be Anthony Harris. At the 31-yard line, a gain of about four yards on the play. Andrew Jones and Roy Ravenel makes a stop. Here's the stats for the first quarter. Yeah, you look at it. Nickel State is dominating, especially time of possession, 11 minutes, 12 seconds, 3 minutes, 48 for Furman. Furman offense has not had an opportunity to get any rhythm at all going because Nickel State has really dominated. Of course, Furman has the two big turnovers too, Chuck, and they've got the ball again deep in Furman territory. Second down, six yards to go. 
And hand off a broken tackle, and Cole is off to the races, takes it down to the 21-yard line. Jeff Bambro, the defensive tackle, had him wrapped up, but he slipped out. Brandon Williams, freshman linebacker, had to make the stop. Talk about assignment football. Brambo, one of his responsibilities, hit on the fullback, and you see the hit there. Freeman also had a decision to make. William Freeman, the linebacker, 49, got kind of a no-man's lane. No, didn't know whether to take the fullback or quarterback. Van Hoy ends up on his rear end, but uh, he'll take the game for a big first down. And yeah, that was a pretty good block on Bambro, too, by Cody Stogner, the center. And quarterback keeper is Van Hoy. We'll take it across the 20 to the 19. Brandon Williams makes his second straight tackle. One or two with this Furman defense on the field so long. We just saw that graphic 11 minutes on the field in the first quarter. How long they can hold up because this is a really big line for Nickel State that's been leading on the entire ball. Game. That was Andrew Jones on the stop, not Brandon Williams. Second down and eight. And a counter play. Hutchinson takes it, breaks a tackle, takes it across the 10 down to the eight yard line. First time we've seen that action. First time we've seen a counter play by Nickel State. And that time Hutchinson broke a tackle at the line of scrimmage. You're going to see him bounce off somebody right there, point of attack. Bambro. Bambro got into the secondary and got a big first down. It's goal to go again for Nickel State. It seems like this spent the entire ball game in the shadow of the Furman goal line. Total yardage after that play. 124 for Nickel State to 10 yards for Furman. Handoff going to Cole. This time he's hit for a loss at the 10-yard line. They look like Good job again by the middle of the Furman defense. Gaines Burnett, a true freshman in there, just sit him up right at the line of scrimmage. Furman, Chuck, as we anticipated they would do against this running attack like George Southern. They've got eight men in the box almost on every down. And, uh, of course, Van Hoy does have the one big completion this drive of 40 yards to Okrokona. Close. I didn't get it. <laughs> Here's the option play. And down at the eight-yard line goes Van Hoy. Yale Van Hoy is tackled by Wallace Artis. And also Burnett was over there again for Furman. Well, this artist has really had a good year for Coach Bobby Lamb from the Paladin. The 6'4", 267 pound sophomore has really, especially second part of the season, has really come on to play an outstanding defense for the Paladin. Third down goal to go. Ball at the eight-yard line. And there's Van Oy going to keep. Turns the corner, knocked down at the three-yard line. Running wide, Yale Van Noy, the quarterback keeper, watch it again. Van Noy really does a good job here of using his body, just leaning in. It looks like they were going to hit him at about the five. He got leaned forward with that big body of his and got it all the way down to the three. But this time, Jay Thomas is not rolling the dice on fourth down going court. He's going to take the sure three. Brandon Williams made the tackle for Furman, and that's got to be a victory for the Furman defense if they can hold Nickel State within a touchdown here. That's it. Alex Romero makes this field goal. Uh, 19 yards, kick is on the way, and it's good. Romero, his second field goal of the day, gives Nickel State a 6-0 lead over Furman. Division 1 AA football playoff action on CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. Ball tips off today on CSS as the Georgia Bulldogs face head coach Dennis Felton's former team, Western Kentucky, catch the dogs in Hilltoppers tonight at 8 o'clock only on CSS. Yeah, with that field goal, Romero is now perfect. Six for six inside the 30-yard line. He was four for four coming in. He's hit two today. And that's why they have the 6 nothing lead. There's your scoring drive. 73 yards. Most of that coming on the pass play from Vanoy to Michael Aquanakwe. 40 yards on that one. Yep. 
Furman really needs to get something going offensively here. They just haven't been able to do anything. We saw the graphic earlier from the first quarter, only one first, first down in the ball game to this point. Middleton on the return, up the middle he goes, and he takes it out to the 34-yard line. William Middleton out of Atlanta has turned into a kick returner extraordinaire. He's averaging 22.3 yards per return. The tackle on the play made by a cornerback, Henry Johnson. Good job here by the wedge and a good job by Middleton getting up in the wedge, breaking through the first wave and got Furman in their best field position of the day. And Ingram Martin and company just got to make some plays here to get Furman's offense going and get them back in the ball game. Middleton gets by Henry Johnson and he has only the kicker to beat. He just about broke that one. So first down, 10 yards to go, ball at the 33-yard line. Martin, under center, will run the option. There's Brandon Mays, 35, 40, out of bounds. He goes at the Nickel State 48-yard line. In the last series, Furman ran the option for first down, got called back by a hole. They're going to run it again right here. You're going to see 45, Felton make a great block on the corner just out of the pitcher. Cornerback's on the ground right there. Letting Brandon Mays turn it upfield, get inside Nickel State territory. So Furman in business, sitting at about the 48-yard line of the Colonels. 19-yard gain on that play for Brandon Mays, a senior tailback from Arden, North Carolina. Furman with its best field position of the day here. There's Mays again, puts his head down, runs over a defensive back, Tony Edison and takes it down inside the 45 to about the 42, a gain of six yards on that play for Brandon Mays. A lot is said about Furman's passing game with Ingram Martin, and rightly so, one of the premier quarterbacks in the nation, but Furman also runs the football extremely well. They average over 200 yards a game, a balanced attack, and that time, Brandon Mays, who's the third tailback Bobby Lamb's used today, got positive yardage on first down. Coach Lamb looking on, his Paladins face second down, Four yards to go from the Colonel's 42-yard line. And off going to Mays again, up the middle, and somebody just got an ankle on him. That was the middle linebacker, Corey Vavala. And if Vavala doesn't get Brandon Mays' ankle, he may go all the way. Good job here, point of attack. You see Corey Stewart pulling out, getting a piece of the linebacker, but not enough of a piece because Vavala came off Corey Stewart's block, just up in Mays, or he would have been touchdown bound for the Furman Paladin. That was a gain of eight yards. So it's first down 10 ball at the 34 yard line for Furman. Paladins have Grant Brigham and Brian Stone in the game at wideout. Now John Russ, the tight end, switch wide to the right. And the handoff this time goes to big, rather to Brandon Mays once again. So he carries for the fourth straight time and takes it down inside the 29-yard line. Looks like Bobby Lamb said, you know what, we're going back to basics here. We're going to give the ball to the tailback, which we have done since the Stone Ages here in football at Furman. After four straight carries, Brandon Mays comes off, gets a glad hand from his teammates on the sideline. And now Derek Carter, the starter, back in there. Second down and four yards to go, ball at the 29. <laughs> And off going to Carter. Bounces outside. Knocked out of bounds. Inside the 25. Come on out. They mark it at the 23 yard line. That was a gain of six. And a tackle by Henry Johnson. Herman averaging, averaging just over five yards of carry. It's going to be a first down. Good job again. Felton, you see his block there. You see Kibbett with a block. Sprague on the corner with a block. So Furman's offensive line doing the job right now. Furman, as you said, Chuck, on this drive, doing it all on the ground. You see Derek Carter, another senior, a tailback. He came in averaging over five yards a carry. Has eight rushing touchdowns. First down 10 for the Paladin. Ball at the 24-yard line. Play action. Martin going to throw underneath. Dropped by Felton at the 22. Play action set up by the back firm has run the football so well. Inga Martin, Inga Martin, no pressure on him here as he fakes to Carter, comes out. They slide Felton in the flat. He's wide open. He just dropped the football. I think he turned up before he had it. Yep, he would have had a big game, possibly another first down. If not, they would have been second and short, but he dropped it. So now a second and 10 for Furman. Paladins down here, 6 nothing. as you can see. We're playing in the second quarter. You see the difference between the first quarter and this drive here in the second quarter for Furman. Here's Martin. Crosses at 20, goes to the 19, got crunched. Coming up to make the play was Chris Turner. 
the strong side linebacker and Jermaine Goggin was also there. Third time today, Furman has run the option play. Ingle Martin doesn't have a lot of rushing yards, only 147, but he can run the football. He had an 80-yard touchdown run against Gardner Webb earlier in the year. Third down, six yards to go after the four-yard pickup by the Paladins quarterback. Now Martin's going to look to the sidelines and audible. What's the play clock here? Might need to call a timeout. On the option, quick pitch. Carter gets knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Great play that time by the cornerback who came up, and that was Joseph Ogletree. The free safety actually came up to make the play on Derek Carter, so Furman will try a field goal here. Yeah, evidently, the coaches thought they saw something upstairs. They tried to run the speed option into the short side of the field, but Nickel State really had it defended well and held Carter to almost no game. Number 29. So Scott Beckler, who is a sophomore from nearby Anderson, South Carolina, will try a 36-yarder here. Ryan Stone is a holder. Thomas Slaughter, the snapper. Those two are very good. The kick coming in will come in short. And Furman still with a goose egg on the board. As Beckler got it up there, but the 36-yarder was short. We'll take a break. 7.44 left first half. Furman still trailing here. 6-0 on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. This year's biggest splash, the new char-grilled chicken sandwich from Chick-fil-A. Rebuilt from the wheat bun up, it's our best char-grilled chicken sandwich ever. I've been up and I've been down. What I love's in Athens town. I love the red, I love the black. It's what I'm wearing on my back. You want to dress like a dog fan too? Then this is all you gotta do. Just get online, dogware.net. There's everything you'll want to get. Dogware.net. Everything with a dog except fleas. At Wolf Camera, it's all about extra value. David Ritz for Wolf Camera. And it's about service and selection. Here's a great gift. Nikon 6.1 megapixel D50 digital SLR with zoom lens, only $6.99. Or the super slim 6 megapixel Nikon Coolpix S3 digital camera with large LCD monitor, just $3.79. And with either camera, get an Epson photo printer free after mail-in rebate. You will not pay more for a camera at Wolf Camera. I promise. <laughs> Guy all bundled up here on a cool day in Greenville, South Carolina for Division I AA football. Who will capture the inaugural ACC championship? Which SEC squad? Florida. I'd rather Georgia or LSU will earn an automatic BCS bowl bid. Danny Sheridan weighs in on talking football Sunday at 7 only on CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. Heard an earlier score from another game today. Number one seed New Hampshire leading Colgate 20 to nothing. That game late in the second quarter. First down 10 at the 20-yard line for Nickel State. They're up six zip in this one. And a handoff going to the fullback. He's going to take it out to about the 24-yard line on first down. Well, Furman's last possession, their best drive by far the day, got all the way just inside the Nickel State 20. Maybe on the ground, they had a first down there. Pass on the flat that was dropped, and that seemed to really take the air out of the drop, Chuck. They just kind of bogged down after that. Joseph Tobias in the game at fullback now carries for three yards. Second down and seven yards to go from 23. You see the rushing yardage. Berman has averaged more per play, though, more, more per rushing play than Nickel State has. There's a quarterback. Vanoy, he breaks a tackle, squirts across the 25 out to about the 27 for William Freeman. And Andrew Jones combined on the stop. Second option out of the triple option. They're going to pull back on the first down, then they come back, quarterback keep on the second down, and Nickel State just plugs away. They usually in a situation just like this, third down and short, which is what they really like to be in. Third and three, ball at the 27, possession down for Nickel State here. Yeah. 
with two for seven on third down and on the option play the quick pitch will go to Anthony Harris he's going to pick up the first down and a lot more out near midfield tackled at the 49 yard line by Gary Nelson and Andrew Jones we talk about uh, assignment football they get the quarterback to get the fullback they don't get the pitch man and he's just roaming free in the secondary got a big first down and Nickel State moving the six again they're just dominating the time of possession although they only lead six to nothing on the scoreboard that was a 21 21 yard pickup for Anthony Harris the running back really impressed with Yale Vanoi running this triple option offense. He's a Southern Miss transfer from Demopolis, Alabama. There's the option. Vanoi keeps, gets three yards to the 49-yard line of Furman. We're in Greenville, South Carolina. Division I AA playoffs at Paladin Stadium. I'm Chuck Hushin along with Gordon Higgins. And Furman Trailing Nickel State here six to nothing as we play in the second quarter. It will be second down and seven yards to go for the Nickel State Colonels in their first playoff since 1996. Out of Thibodeau, Louisiana. Quarterback keep the option play and down goes Harris for a three yard loss. Nice play by Shelton Riley, the strong safety. That time they played the pitch perfect. They sure did. That time Riley comes up from his strong safe position. He's got pitch responsibility. He's going to come off a block right here and make a good play in the backfield. And got negative yardage. So, again, third and long for Nickel State. Furman's defense, time after time, keeps turning the Colonels away. Although Nickel State does lead 6 to nothing on two field goals. Third down, a little less than nine yards to go. Start a man in motion. Danoy going to throw to the near side. A catch at the 40-yard line, and that's good for a first down. Michael Akwanakwa on the catch, his second of the day. That's first down, Nickel State, after about a 12-yard gain on that play. He's, he's got both possessions today, a 40-yarder, and now this one, a possession reception, about 12 yards on a first down against the squatting in front of Maurice Duncan. Okay, catches the ball on his knees, but it keeps the sticks moving. Nickel State. Boy, time of possession for them just keeps piling up. They just keep hogging the football while they Furman have it. They are now four for nine in third down efficiency in this game after that pass completion. Quick pitch. There's Harris in trouble. Goes down at the 45-yard line. William Freeman smelled that one out. The weak side linebacker. Senior from Swansea, South Carolina, was all over. Yeah, Freeman came unblocked that time, read the play, came through clean, made a good, sure high tackle, and negative play against Nickel State. Normally you think this is a passing situation, but in the previous series we saw him second and long, they just ran the fullback up the middle for about 16 yards. So anything possible with this triple option offense. Second down, 15 yards to go, ball at the Furman 45. You look into the eyes of Yale Vanoy, the senior quarterback from Kingsville, Texas. Handoff gone to the fullback this time, and he rumbles across the 40 down to the 38-yard line. I think that was Tobias. Yep, Joseph Tobias. And Freeman and Jones combine on the stop for Furman. He disagrees from eyes. Second long, not necessarily up. Throwing down for Nickel State as well as they run the triple option offense. Same thing here. They look like they, they probably feel like they're in two down territory. They've got two plays to make nine yards, so I don't necessarily look for them to put it up here either. I look for them to run the triple option. Gain of six yards for Tobias. Vanoy going to throw to the near side, knocked away by Mo Duncan. That was intended for Aquanaqua. But nice play by Maurice Duncan, the senior co-captain for Furman. Been picking on Maurice Duncan all day. This time he reads it perfectly, steps in front, almost makes a big pick. And if he had picked it, he would have been gone. That was six. So it's fourth down. And nine yards to go. Ball at the Furman 39-yard line. Dropping deep to punt it away is Sean Como, who averages 34.3 yards per punt. So far today, he's had one punt for 42 yards. Justin Steph is deep to receive for Furman. Furman got nine lines. Sitting in on the line, not rushing, though. Setting up a return. I think he's going to boom it into the end zone. I think that's a safe bet. It goes into the band. Well, there are no hands today. 
They've got drumsticks in their hands. We'll take a break. 2.47 until halftime. Still 6 0. Berman trailing Nickel State here on CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. A lot of friends tell me they don't have time to make the drive to Carpets of Dalton. I tell them, let the campus come to them. Just call this number. It's not a chain store. The world's largest floor covering store lets you choose from an unlimited amount of selections. Floor coverings for every room. Rugs, tiles, laminates, vinyl, you name it. No answering machines, no telemarketers. You'll talk to lifelong employees of the campus. Pick up the phone. Your dream home is on the other end. The Carpets of Dalton campus. Introducing the breakthrough golf discovery of the millennium, The Rock. Used by pros, adored by the average golfer, the results are the same. This golf club face is stronger than any other golf club in the entire industry. Ever invented, all time. What makes this golf club the best? Designed with new integrated web technology and manufactured with a revolutionary new material called composite resin. We're confident that your drive will be longer, straighter, and more consistent. So when they came out with this new product called composite resin, they actually got a face that was much harder than titanium, steel, wood, graphite. This is the next generation golf club. See, it's straight, but I still don't feel like I hit it very well. And that was off the toe, and it was killed. We guarantee that you'll find The Rock the most satisfying golf experience or your money back. Order The Rock for only five easy payments of $29.99. Plus, call and order right now, and we'll make one payment for you. That's only four payments of $29.99 for the absolute best golf club. Call now. As you can see, late in the first half, Nichols State with a 6 0 lead on Furman. First time in history these two have met. And Coach Bobby Lamb, a little more consistency on offense last possession, but bogged down, as you said, on a, a drop pass attempt. And then they missed a 36 yard field goal. Engel Martin, the quarterback. Play action. Pass almost intercepted at 30. Nearly picked off by Chris Turner, the strong side linebacker. Tries to go to John Rust here on a crossing pattern after the play fake. Rust is open momentarily, but you see a good recovery by the linebacker who stepped in front. Actually threw it behind Rust a little bit, and that's why the linebacker had a chance to recover and almost made the interception. So second down and 10 yards to go from the 20-yard line. After that 39-yard punt, by Scott Como, the automatic touchback brings it out to the 20. Martin going to hand on a draw play up the middle goes Gibson. He takes it out to the 40 yard line. Cedric Gibson, a sophomore from Somerton, South Carolina, picks up the first down. They're going to mark it at the 38. That's an 18 yard game. Tony Edison made the stop. Good job there by Felton blocking on the linebacker. Babala, their all conference linebacker, got Gibson in the secondary and got Furman. A big first down right there. Joseph Ogletree, the free safety, was also there. So Furman keeps its drive alive. Marked at the Paladins 38-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go. Nickel State with a slight edge over Furman in the first downs category. Quick pitch. Here's Gibson on the corner. 45. Puts his head down. Takes it into. Now he's going to mark it right at the 50-yard line. A gain of 12 yards on the play. And LeVon Bailey, the strong side linebacker, made the stop. The counter option play. You can see Gibson just wide open on the corner out there. Sprague doing a great job blocking on the wide out. And uh, gets about 11 yards for the catch up to him. And right out to 50, Chuck. Got to watch the clock. Two Furman does. 159 till the half. And they've only got uh, two timeouts to go. 36 yards rushing for Cedric right now. Over 10 yards to carry. Play action. Martin going for the bundle. Has step out there, but overthrows everyone. Second down and 10 yards to go from the 50. I think that time Ingobar was just throwing the football away. Tried to get Justin step on a deep post. Step leads the Southern Conference in touchdown passes for seven. But uh, Nickel State not biting on the play fake at all. Had him double covered. And Ingobar just kind of threw it away. Tony Edison and Tommy Lee Brown had good coverage on Justin step that time. So second down, 10 yards to go. Cedric Gibson, still the eye back for Furman. And Ingle Martin going to run the option. Fakes. And turns it upfield. 
out of bounds he goes at the 33 yard line gain of 17 first down 10 for Furman Tony Edison number 10 you see him he got over to knock Martin out of bounds Martin earlier this season went 80 yards in a game against Gardner Webb for a touchdown absolutely right here he just shows the football to the safety to influence him to come out on Cedric Gibson he kept it out around the linebacker and got a big first down for Furman and uh, Ingle Martin has, has really deceptive speed when he gets on the corner. For a guy 6'3", 224, that's why it's deceptive. Transferred to Furman from the University of Florida two years ago. Handoff gone to Felton, and Big Felton rumbles inside the 30 to about the 29-yard line, and Coach Bobby Lamb runs down. He wants to call a timeout here with 91 seconds remaining in the second quarter as Brian Pyle makes the stop. Yeah, Jerome Felton, uh, the J train, as they call him here at, at Furman University, has had a tremendous year, over 600 yards rushing, 14 rushing touchdowns. There's Jerome right there getting a little Gatorade on the sideline. 14 rushing touchdowns, two rush, two touchdowns receiving. Also, has scored two two-point plays for Furman. He's got 100 points on the year, so they really would like to get the J train more involved in this offense, but haven't had too many opportunities for anybody getting involved in the Furman offense. No. Today, Chuck Nickel State has really dominated time of possession. And, you know, he fumbled on the opening play of the game. You should uh, also mention that Felton is playing with a broken index finger on his right hand, the hand with which he carries the ball, and that could have had something to do with the uh, fumble. Very well could have. He uh, broke that finger against Georgia Southern several weeks ago in that big matchup down in, in Statesboro. There, you can see the splint on the right index finger of Jerome Felton. But uh, he is just a tremendous runner for back since 1988 to make all conference all southern conference second down six yards to go after felton's four yard pickup steph is the motion man as he moves over on the left side there's the play action and wide open wheel route justin step touchdown Furman. Again, a play set up by play action because Furman has run the football so effectively they go with play action. This time they run step on a crossing pattern and he is he is just wide open in the secondary. You can see the play action here holding the linebacker. Martin comes out, no pressure at all. You can just see how wide open Justin Step is there. And Martin again, presence of mind to just take a little bit off the football. Didn't want to overthrow it at that point, knowing how wide open he was. And with this extra point coming up, Furman can take the lead. That's 19 touchdown passes on the year for Martin that ties him career-wise with his head coach, Bobby Lamb, for the career lead in touchdown passes. Each has thrown 41. Don't see the touchdown again. Ingle Martin coming out on the corner, no pressure. Just kind of flips it out there. Justin Stepp, wide open. Touchdown number eight for Mr. Stepp. And uh, Cotton Beckler's PAT, Furman's up 7-6. to six. Uh, Nickel State owns time of possession, but Furman owns the scoreboard, Chuck. And we should say that uh, Ingle Martin played uh, in two seasons with the Paladins through 41 touchdown passes. Bobby Lamb played in four seasons and had a tremendous career, but Ingle Martin doubles him up in just two years. <laughs> How's that, Coach? I'd sure like to remember that. The scoring <laughs> drop coming up. Uh, 70, 80 yards, seven plays, only took a minute, 23. Great job, again, of Furman of mixing the pass and the run, creating that pass on on the ability to run the football with a little play action, Justin Stepp just wide open behind everybody. And Furman, just the fact that uh, yep. offensively hadn't got much going. They got to be really pleased right now to be up seven to six. And I think all the credit has to go to their defense, who's just played outstanding football today, holding Nickel State to only two field goals. Although Nickel State has just been kind of dominating on time of possession. Scott Beckler will kick it off. After the 29-yard touchdown pass from Ingle Martin to Justin Stepp. Deep to receive are Brandon Zachary and Jermaine Boggan. You get a good look at Scott Beckler. Going to kick the squibba. And then it's fielded on a hop by Boggan. And he gets on the far side, only Beckler to beat, can't beat him, and he's tackled finally at the 45-yard line. That squib kick is supposed to prevent the big-time return. That time it didn't work out that way for Furman. It sure did. One of the problems for Furman special teams this year has been their kickoff coverage. They tried all kinds of, of options. That time they tried, tried the short kick, and this time they're going to squib it. And it looks like they've got plenty of time to get guys down there, but uh, good job by Bogans, who 
got through the first wedge, and you can just see nobody there. And Dorch does a good job of saving the touchdown, and a minute 16 to go, Nickel State with only one timeout. 40-yard kickoff return for Boggan. And a handoff going to the pullbacks. Roderick Cole, nothing. Furman stops it in the middle. Wallace Artis, the defensive end, was there. Artis having a big year for Furman. Seven tackles for loss. And depending on the spot, that could be number eight. Not a good, not a good read there by quarterback Yel Benoit on his first option. The fullback, and Artis just ate him up there behind the line of scrimmage. Second down, 10 yards to go. Ball at the Furman 45-yard line. Clock rolls under 50 seconds. Danoy going to throw on the pass. Almost intercepted by Maurice Duncan. Ran out of real estate, though, at the 25-yard line. So it's going to bring up third down at 10 yards to go. Anthony Harris was the intended receiver for Yale Danoy. Good job of coverage that time by Duncan. And Riley, especially in the secondary, gave Danoy no option. So he just threw it away to avoid a sack. On the year, Nichols State only 49 yards a game passing, and they've already thrown for 50 today against the Furman defense. And that only the two completions. That's 50 yards. Both to Aquanaqua. Handoff going to Big Cole, and he is graded by a whole bunch of Paladins in the middle. Andrew Jones was there. Wesley Bray was on the tackle. Brandon Williams was there. Got two yards out of the play. Nope. And we'll see if Nickel State runs one more play here. They face fourth down and nine yards to go, and they're going to watch the final seconds tick off here in the second quarter. They're not in your hurry to run up to the line of scrimmage. I think that's going to we'll take the house, Chuck. Two high-powered offenses going at it here today, but not many points on the board. Neither team is finding the end zone Hold and on. now we're going to get a timeout called at the last second by Furman I think. Nope, Nickel State they're saying coach Jay Thomas and of course an NCAA football coach is called a timeout he actually said he got the time the official said he got the timeout they're going to put four seconds on the clock so Hail Mary time for Nickel State look for him just to heave it deep and hope hope to get a reception here. Which makes sense the ball at the Furman 43 yard line and Gail Vanoy will try to throw it to the end zone, see what happens. Nothing to lose. They let the clock run down to four seconds before burning their final timeouts. That was one of the things I was watching the Furman coaches along the sidelines when they made the stop on third down with about 40 seconds to go. If they were going to use their last timeout, they decided not to. You think about that there. By calling the timeout, it would have forced Nickel State to punt the football, but now by not calling it, you're going to give Nickel State a chance to throw the ball into the end zone in the last play of the half. So. Bobby Lamb going to kind of sweat this last play out in case Nickel State happens to hit a home run on this last play of the first half. Furman will go with five defensive backs as they bring Jeremy Blocker off the bench. He's the nickel back here, and Paladins will go with three down linemen as Danoy, for the first time today, goes out of the shotgun, and we get timeout called by Furman. Furman. Once they saw what kind of set Nickel State was coming out in, they took their last time out. Also, at the last minute, they ran William Middleton in there, so they actually had six defensive backs in there. And don't look for them to change this. So, basically, with the three-man rush you're going to give, you would assume you're going to give Yell by no time to throw the football into the end zone. He's shown he's got the arm. He threw that long pass earlier, 40 yards his biggest completion of the day. So. Actually, on this play now, they'll bring six DBs in there, but the sixth one is actually Shelton Riley, the strong safety. Correct. They'll use him at a linebacker position along with William Freeman. Use those guys on the corner. They're great speed rushers. They'll blitz one of those guys or run one of those guys in there, put a tremendous amount of pressure on uh, the quarterback. Good point, Chuck. We're going to go back to see if, if Nickel State somehow hits this home run. Bobby Lamb will be asked, you know, why do you didn't call the timeout with 40 seconds to force Nickel State to punt the football. We'll just have to see how it plays out. Just turned an update on the score up to New Hampshire. New Hampshire just rolling over Colgate, 44 to nothing at half. Our old pal Big Spoon Brown is on the PA here today. There we go. Van Oy going to unload and going to throw it in. It's going to be short. 
and it's going to be knocked to the turf incomplete. So the first half is in the books. Defensive battle between the Furman Paladins and Nickel State Colonels. Both teams heading for the dressing room. And we have our halftime show coming up. Your score here at halftime, third-ranked Furman over 21st-ranked Nickel State 7-6 on CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. 7-6, and we're joined now by the chairman of the selection committee for the NCAA-1AA playoffs, Rochel Laney. And Rochel, uh, boy, a great first half. There's, I guess uh, we expected a lot of points to go on the board with these uh, two teams offensive. However, it's been a defensive battle. Yeah, very much so. You know, you got a ball control team in Nickel State who runs that option, wishbone type. And then you've got Furman that's just very versatile. They hit the big play at the end of the uh, second quarter. Uh, who knows what happened in the second half, though? All right. Of course, Nickel State, one of the hottest teams in 1AA football right now. They've won five straight games coming into this one. And uh, it's uh, almost on the selection process. And you chaired it last weekend. But who's hot? What have you done for me lately? Those are the teams that get in. Very much so. I think you can look at the uh, bracket with Richmond. Richmond won seven in a row down the stretch. They made a quarterback change after the third game of the season. They're a different football team now at this time of the year than they were at the beginning. Uh, Nichols, you know, they overcame so much this year to get here. They had the hurricane that came through. They had two games they had to cancel and not play, and they win the automatic qualifier out of the Southland Conference. Yeah, you got to hand it to Nichols State in Thibodeau, Louisiana. They suffered the effects, first of all, of her Hurricane Katrina, and then Hurricane Rita came through, and uh, as you said, they lost uh, one game with each hurricane. That left them with only nine games to play. They were one and three. They win the final five games of the season. They beat McNeese State last Saturday to win their first conference championship ever. Just a tremendous accomplishment to be here. Very much so. And, you know, in Southland Conference is a tremendous football league. You know, they got Texas State uh, that's playing Georgia Southern today. You know, it, it would have been interesting. You got two option teams that one's gone to uh, Texas State to play. The only game Texas State lost was to this Nickel State team. You turn around, you've got uh, Furman, who lost against Georgia Southern this year, an option type team. So we kind of just flip flop those opponents, and uh, it's been interesting. What criteria do you look at as you go into the selection weekend? Well, you know, you have your eight automatic qualifiers, and after that, our task is to select the eight best remaining teams. Uh, after we do that, then we look at the seeding process, you seed the top four, and then after that, it's a process we're trying to get changed that uh, you pair geographically. Mm -hmm. And I think that's uh, not a good thing right now. But after 9-11, we had to change the criteria and start doing so. So all of a sudden, you get matchups that are, are based on geographic. And so year in and year out, you're getting the same conferences having to compete against one another. So one of our enhancements that we're trying to send forward to the NCAA is to allow us to get back and seed the top eight. That gives you a truer bracket and get you uh, playing, uh, you know, number one maybe against a lower seed than what they are right now. And, of course, Division One AA football, kind of the poster child for all of those fans yeah. out there of 1A football who say, hey, we need a playoff just like Division One AA. Yeah, we've got a true national champion. You know, and when you go into this week, you got 16 teams playing. Any one of the 16 can get hot. You know, last year, James Madison, you know, they, they were not a ranked team, and they went through the, the playoffs as a national champion. So that's the good thing about it. It's just an exciting time of the year for 1AA football. And this field this year, very, very balanced. I think so. You look at it from West Coast to East Coast. Uh, you, you, you've got the, the undefeated Hampton at 11-0, and then you've got a 7-4 Eastern Washington on the board. They won the AQ uh, from out in the Big Sky Conference, so anything can happen this time of the year. Rochel, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Rochel Laney, the chairman of the selection process for Division I AA football, 7-6 at halftime here as Furman leads Nickel State. Back with more after this on CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. Back to Greenville, South Carolina, the NCAA Division I-AA playoffs here. First round game, and at halftime, the Furman Paladins leading the Nickel State Colonels by a 7-6 score. Furman scores late on a 29-yard touchdown pass from Engel Martin to Justin Stepp, and that put the Paladins out in front for the first time today on the Colonels. This is one of eight games being played around the nation today as the first round of the playoffs will pare it down to eight next week. 
The semifinals will roll around the week after, and then the championship game will take place in Chattanooga, Tennessee on December 16th. That's a Friday as the two survivors go to Chattanooga to decide the 1AA championship. Look, looking at the scoreboard here around the nation, only one other game going on at the moment, and that is between Colgate and New Hampshire, and New Hampshire with a wide, wide margin at halftime on the Red Raiders of Colgate. And of course, uh, several other games coming up later in the day. Georgia Southern, also representing the Southern Conference, will visit Texas State. Texas State, one of the top four seeds in this tournament. And uh, Texas State, in fact, was beaten by Nickel State earlier in the season as Texas State was uh, the four seed but finished second behind the Nickel State Colonels when head-to-head -head competition decided the conference championship in the Southland. Now also today, Appalachian State will entertain the Lafayette Leopards of the Patriot League, and uh, that is one of, as I said, eight games taking place today around the country. But in this one, good tight defensive battle on a beautiful day for football in Greenville, South Carolina as Furman leads Nichols State at the break, 7-6. to six. We'll come back with more at halftime right after this. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. Let's take a look now at first-half highlights. Furman fumbled the ball on the very first time of possession as, kept, as uh, Jerome Felton fumbled the football, and then it was picked up by Nichols State and returned back down to about the 30-yard line. That was... Newton on the recovery and then a 39 yard field goal by Alex Romero with the first points on the board. This was a big play, this defensive stop at the goal line by the Paladin. Fourth and one and Andrew Jones with a big tackle. And here's the touchdown pass for Furman wide open. Justin Step running the wheel round as he gets open deep. And you know, Furman has the 7 6 lead. Not many points going on the board, but you got to figure that uh, these two teams uh, are just kind of feeling each other out early. A lot more points will go on the board in the second half. Yeah, Chuck, you can see the halftime stats coming up there. The biggest stat on there is the time of possession stat. Nickel State just a tremendously in time of possession. And Coach Thomas, that's what they wanted to do coming in keep Furman's offense on the sideline, but Furman offense. Got on the field, got that two-minute drive going. They got the touchdown. Ingle Martin to Justin Steph, the PAT. They're up 7-6. to six. And I think, too, another big play was, of course, Furman's ability to run the football. Early uh, in the second quarter, they got that nice drive going. They got the running game untracked, and that opened up things for them passing-wise. It really did, and the thing you mentioned there that set it up was the fact they could run the football so effectively. And on the touchdown play pass, it was play action. Ingle Martin got on the corner. No pressure at all. Justin Step wide open for the big six for Furman. That's why they're up seven to six right now. All right, you're both coaches. You're in the dressing room right now, and I think both coaches are pretty much saying the same thing. Hey, just keep on doing what you're doing out there. Except for Bobby Lamb, let's don't put the ball on the ground. Let's not get, give them turnovers. Furman had two turnovers in the first half. Nickel State turned those into a field goal. The next time they got the turnover, they got tackled at the one yard line. Furman's defense has really played huge. The question I have is, can Steve Wilson's Furman defense keep standing up? They've been on the field a long time. And, of course, the defense for Nickel State, seven seniors starting on this defense. I think they're pretty good. They really are. They uh, they do a good job of pressuring the quarterback. Until Inglemart made that throw to Justin Stepp, he had really been totally ineffective throwing the football. I think he only had two completions for about maybe less than 20 yards, but uh, he can't keep this guy in the wraps all day. All right, and Ingle Martin, of course, many times this season has been the hero late in the game for the Furman Paladins when he's taken the team on his back and, and featured uh, late-scoring drives that have put games in the victory column. And what impresses me about Ingle Martin, like on that two-minute drive, he never panicked. He has total confidence in himself. He has total confidence in his teammate, especially his big offensive line. You saw in that possession, they ran the football effectively with Cedric Gibson and Ingle Martin running option plays. That set up the play action. That set up the big completion to Justin Stepp, Beckler's PAT. And even though Nickel State has all the time of possession, Furman has the most important number right now. That's seven against Nickel State, six on the scoreboard. And, of course, Nickel State's quarterback, Yale Van Oy, he is uh, the Southland Conference Offensive Player of the Year, and uh, he's done a tremendous job all season long, so you can't count his team out either. Absolutely not, and uh, what impresses me about him is his decisions. He makes excellent decisions, running the triple option offense, 
They have three options. They got two excellent fullbacks in Tobias and, and Cole. We saw them featured in the first half. He also something we haven't didn't expect that much, but we did think we'd see it some. That's putting the ball in the corner on the third option, the pitch. They got a big first down on their last drive on the pitch, but uh, he doesn't throw the football that often. But when he does, he's effective. He's had two big completions today, one a 40 yarder that set up led to their second field goal. And I think too, uh, special teams wise, Nickel State's winning that battle right now. Uh, Furman gave up that long kickoff return. Paladins have given up a couple of field goals to Alex Romero. Stay with us. We're going to come back for the second half. And uh, that's coming up right around the corner as Furman will be getting the football next. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. You're pretty. Waiting long? Yeah, and I'm late. No car, huh? Uh-uh. Bad credit. Uh, I got a car. Hey. Can't get financing. Sure you can. It's easy. Just call 1-800-BAR-NONE. If you need car financing, even if you have bad credit, 1-800-BAR-NONE could get you approved in minutes. 1-800-BAR-NONE? You can? I am? Really? Scintillating. Need a car? Call 1-800-BAR-NONE. Everyone deserves a second chance. Bar none. Call now. My nose is a carrot. Uh. Um, I'd like to make a toast. Here's to the three newest members of the family. New Year's Ball, Snowman Ball, and Reindeer Ball. Get one free with the purchase of any large combo. I'm flying! <laughs> That's just wrong. Make contact. Make friends. Friends. Make fun. Wait, fun. Friend. Trouble. Make a point. Make it happen. Make believe. Like good. Do. Make new. Make, make no. clear. Make up your mind. Make peace. Make inroads. Right. Reference. Make change. Make change. Make change. Make change. Make change. Make something. Make a stand. Make art. Make a shift. Make a change. Make a change. Make noise. My name's Andy McDonald. I ride this. Useless wooden toy for a living. I do a trick called a 540. It took me a good six years to learn. There's a whole generation of skateboarders out there that are just as talented athletically as any basketball or football player. It takes somebody that's not going to be afraid to fall down a lot because you definitely will fall down. You're not a failure until you refuse to get back up. Drugs are only going to hinder what I'm trying to do. That right there is my idea of getting high. I'm Chuck Hush and along with Gordon Higgins. We get set to go in the second half as the Furman Paladins, led by that man, Coach Bobby Lamb, returns to the field. Furman will be getting the football first as they won the toss and deferred to the second half. Engel Martin cranking it up on the sidelines. He had the big touchdown pass in the first half, late in the first quarter, to Justin Steph, his 19th TD pass of the year. Three of nine for only 36 yards, one touchdown, one pick. That, absolutely, and uh, expecting a lot more from Ingle Martin coming off a career best 323 yards just a week ago against Chattanooga. That, that is very un Ingle like numbers. It really is, and look for him to get more in rhythm in this second half. Of course, the two turnovers there in the first half kept Mr. Martin on the sideline for almost the entire first half, except for that good drive there of 80 yards. Only took a minute 23 in the big play, of course, the pass to Justin Steph. Gail Vanoy, you see him, the Nichols State quarterback, and he has very un like numbers, too. Two of six for only 50 yards. Both passes going to the giant uh, wide receiver, Michael Aquinaqua. As uh, he's 6'4 and matched up against the shorter Furman defensive backs. But, of uh, course, for Yale Benoit, he's actually a yard over his season average. He only averages 49 yards passing a game, so he's a yard over that now with another half to go. And Furman... Won the toss to Burt, so they'll get the football to start the third quarter. And there we see William Middleton, who's become an outstanding return man for the Furman Paladin. He's returned two kicks today for 60 yards, and most of that coming on his kickoff that set up the go-ahead touchdown for the Paladins. That's Alex Romero getting set to kick it off. Romero, a sophomore from Hanville, Louisiana, transferred to Nichols State from LSU. So many Division I-A players have transferred into 1-AA programs and really performed well. Including Furman Tingle Martin, who you mentioned earlier, came from Florida. Here's a short kick that's going to be picked up by Derek Carter across the 40, out to the 43. 
So he tried the pooch kick, and Carter came down, grabbed it, got a nice return out of it, as Jared Landrum, a backup tight end, made the stop. Tried to drop it in no man's land right there, and they did get it to bounce on the ground, but Carter did a good job of anticipating, ran up on the ball, and gave Furman really good field position. And Ingle Martin and company, probably some of the best, best field position they've had today to start a drive and look to add to their one-point lead. Well, other than the kickoff well, return by Middleton, who was out to about the 48-yard line on this kickoff return, and as we said, that short field drive yep. set up Furman's only touchdown. So first down, 10 yards to go. Put the ball at the 43-yard line. Martin's got a hand on a sprint draw as it goes to Brandon Mays. Mays doesn't get much. Maybe two yards to the 45. Mays in the first half carried four times for 38 yards. Michael Young, a defensive end, made the stop. Yeah, Michael Young's a good one. A 6'4", 250-pound senior, all Southland Conference first team. Second down, eight yards to go, ball at the 45. Division one double-A playoff football in Greenville, South Carolina. And there's Mays again. Escapes one tackler, and then is stopped by the defensive tackle, Greg Eastoff. Furman in the first half had a lot of success with this play, which is called a lead play, where you just run the tailback right behind the fullback there you see brandon mays who's the uh, third tailback in the triple tailback tandem of uh, carter gibson and mays he had coming in at a 479 yard rushing and one touchdown yeah those numbers especially average wise just about equal between the three Furman tailbacks and in tandem they've gone over 2,000 yards here's third down five martin for his life now. Big block by John Kibbett. And Martin will step out of bounds at the 47-yard line, and he may be very, very close to the first down. He ran about four miles back there, and I think just got enough for the first down. Watch it again. Somebody's going to peel back and give him a great block here. When, he, when he's in big-time trouble under tremendous pressure, and you'll see 77 coming to your pitcher right there and give him the block. Did I Engel Martin get on the corner? And... They're going to say it is a first down for Furman. Here, Mr. Martin goes tumbling into the bench. Not happy with that. Thought it was a late hit. Didn't get a flag, though, but they do move the chain. They mark it at the 46-yard line of Nickel State. The drive stays alive. And Engel Martin ran all that way to pick up just five yards. But that was just enough for the first down. Yeah, on the day you saw stats there, three rushes for 27 yards. First down, 10 yards to go. That's Grant Brigham in motion for Furman. And here's Mays trying to bounce outside, does. 40, 35, run out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Brandon Mays couldn't find anything inside. Shutting it off inside was Natan Stewart. Just a great job right there with a the stiff arm. As you saw in the defensive end, let him get on the corner, then he just ran through an arm tackle and got a big first down. 12-yard pickup. Brandon May is out now to take a break. Mays today, five rushes, 51 yards, over 10 yards of carry, so Brandon having himself a day. Derek Carter, starting tailback in the ball game now for Furman. They are interchangeable, those three tailbacks for the Paladins. This is Big Felton carrying the ball in his left hand because of that broken finger. He takes it to the 30 for a gain of three. It's going to be second down and seven yards to go. Michael Young, a defensive end from New Orleans, makes a stop. Young does a really good job here. Did a really good job on that play. Came off the block of defensive end. Tight end, I should say, Brad Bell, and held Jerome Felton to only about a two-yard game. Martin gets his play from the bench, and Berman will face second down and seven yards to go here. Mark the ball at the 30-yard line. Play action. Pass underneath, diving catch by tight end John, or rather Brad Bell. Brad Bell with a diving catch at the 25. He's going to be about two yards shy of the first down, but what a grab by Bell. Furman runs a set here. I haven't seen him run before. They've got the tight end Bell, and also the other tight end, Rust, in a slot. Rust ran a deeper pattern. Bell ran underneath pattern and got open for a short gain. So third and two now for Furman. Brad Bell, the backup tight end to John Rust, a junior from Watkinsville, Georgia, 
went to Oconee County High School. And here's a handoff going to Darren Carter. Picks up the first down, gains three to the 22-yard line. You mentioned Oconee County High School, just outside of Athens, Georgia, see of the University of Georgia. Of course, they've got a big game of their rival tonight, Georgia Tech. Tommy Lee Brown made the tackle. You see the numbers on Derek Carter. Derek probably has been the least productive of the Furman tailback to this point, only seven yards rushing. But that one kept the drive alive. Mark it at the 22 and a half yard line, first down and 10 yards to go. This is the opening drive of the second half. Furman with a one point lead over Nichols State. Hand off Felton. Felton will cross the 20 to the 19. Nichols State has really done a pretty good job today on Mr. Jerome Felton. Furman's leading rusher coming in with over 600 yards. There you see Jerome. See his face, he looks a little frustrated there. But he hadn't really been able to get into the secondary. Brian Pyle, the defensive end, makes a stop for Nickel State. Pyle, another senior, 6'2", 250 from Gonzalez, Louisiana. He just saw a shot just a moment ago, Jay Thomas, the Southland Coach of the Year in his second year at Nickel State. Yeah, these guys were picked to finish last in the Southland Conference at the beginning of the year. Here's the pitch going to Carter. Out of bounds at the 15-yard line, Derek Carter. They'll give him the 14, and we have a player down and shaken up. That's Tommy Lee Brown down and shaken up. Joseph Ogletree was over there. Well, listen to this crack. Bang. That was Ogletree and Carter. Here it comes again, right at you. Oh, bang. Oh, headgear to headgear. Derek Carter slides out of bounds and got him an injury timeout here, Chuck cornerback Tommy Lee Brown is injured. We'll take a timeout as well. It's 10:54 remaining third quarter. Furman still up by one on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Catch up. Don't miss a great cup Sunday at nine only on CSS. The great cup, CFL, wider football yeah. field there. Huh? Montreal Alouettes and the Ed Edmondson, Edmondson Eskimo. Easy for you to say. <laughs> You see the drive alive right now for the Furman Paladins. Third down, a couple. And a handoff going to Big Felton. He rumbles for the first down at the 11-yard line. Well, he's going to be right at the sticks, Chuck. They might take a long look at this. Now they're going to say first down. Corey Vavala and Greg Kaysnov make the stop for Nickel State, but not before the J train rumbles at the station once again and picks up another first down. Furman has uh, total confidence in Jerome Felton in short yardage situations because time after time, just like there, he always delivers running behind his fine offensive line. Mark it at the 12-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go. Furman controlling the ball here early in the third quarter. Here is Derek Carter. He'll go to the six. Carter on the carry. Picks up about six. Tackled by Greg Kaysnov, the defensive tackle. When that play first developed, it looked like Carter might get into the end zone, but the good job by the linebackers in closing. But a good positive gain on first down by Furman. Greg Kaysnov, a uh, transfer from Southern Mississippi, which is the alma mater of his head coach, Jay Thomas. Gain of five yards on the play. Second down, five yards to go. They mark it at the seven-yard line. And a handoff, this time going to Ryan Joyce, the fullback. Joyce is in there at fullback as Felton came out. Now Felton off the bench, he'll return to the lineup. Ryan Joyce, a senior from Howie in the Hill, Florida. And they're gonna mark him at the four, so it's gonna be third down here. And about two and a half yards to go, Joyce comes out. Patrick Sprague comes out. He wears number five. John Rust is in there. So Furman will go with a double tight end set here. Look for Ingle Martin maybe to have some kind of option here, run pass, get him on the corner. Third down conversions. And we get a whistle, a timeout call by the Paladins as they timeout. just escape Furman. the play clock violation. Yeah, that was called by Bobby Lamb again in the NCAA football. Coaches can call, call a timeout. And I, evidently, he saw something with the 
Nickel State defense and made him believe the play they had called was not going to work. So this is a critical stage of the game for the Furman offense. They scored on their last possession to take the lead. They like nothing better than to score in their first possession of the third quarter to go up by eight points. Paladins gathered around Coach Bobby Lamb, who was a great quarterback here back in the mid-80s and led his team to the Division I AA championship game. Then they dropped to Georgia Southern out in Tacoma, Washington. Yep, to Eric Russell's Georgia Southern Eagles. Don't forget sports night each weeknight at 6 and then again at 11 Eastern time on CSS. Real men talking real sports on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Bobby Lamb from Commerce, Georgia, his brother Al Lamb, high school coach in Georgia, Calhoun, had a big win in the semifinals last night in Atlanta over Grady, the Grady Gray Knights. And Grady, they were really excited. First time they've been to the playoffs since 53 when Eric Russell. Everybody recognizes that game with head coach at Grady High School took them to a state title back in 53. And there's a handoff going to Big Felton and Furman playing bust him in the mouth football as Felton goes down close to the first down marker. We'll have to check the spot. I think he's going to be a yard short, so Coach Bobby Lamb and the Furman coaches have a decision to make here. You go for it with a yard to go, or do you take the three points? Well, you've got a 255 pound fullback who has lost four yards all season. They're not going to be And you've got out. less than a yard to go. So if you're the coach, I go for it. I'd go for it too. And that's what Bobby Lamb's going to do. Of course, Engel Martin is a big quarterback as well, 6'3, 224 pounds, and this could be a quarterback keeper as well. Fourth down, less than one yard to go. In the first quarter, Furman stopped Nickel State in a situation like this, but not this time. Felton to the end zone, touchdown at 255 pound fullback. Gets it done. Nope, they're going to say his knee hit at the one. He's, he bounced into the end zone. Here comes the replay. We're going to see if the knee does go down. Got a great block and point of attack by Brian Lagos. And boy, I don't know about that. Let's see it again at this angle. We'll have a good look at it. Man. Chuck Looks Hudson, like that was a touchdown. That ball crossed the plane of the end zone before his knee touched down. Yeah, it looked like he but was nonetheless, it's a first down. Goal to go at the one-yard line. We'll see if they give it to Felton again. No, quarterback sneak. Engel Martin stretching forward. And they give it to him. Touchdown, Furman. Engel Martin on the quarterback sneak. Paladins finally pounded in there. And they go out in front here, 13 to 6. He gets a good push behind his center. Corey Stewart is going to get right behind him, that all-conference center, and just keep pushing. And Jerome Felton gives him a nudge from behind, too. And I think Jerome Felton's nudge got him into the end zone. Uh, the push from the J train gets it done. And Furman out in front here by seven. You see Engel Martin as he comes to the sidelines. Scott Beckler on to try the point after. He's 49 of 50 on the year. And now he's 50 of 51 as he knocks it through. 8.06 left, third quarter. Furman builds its lead over Nichols State. 14 to 6 is your score. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. You see the scoring drive, 57 yards, 15 plays. The opening kickoff of the third quarter. And it consumes six minutes and 51 seconds. So ball control advantage Furman here in the second half. Yeah, most of that coming on the ground. Only a short pa pass to Brad Bell sprinkled in there. Beckler going to kick it off. And he's going to kick it to the end zone where Brandon Zachary will take it and take a knee. The ball will come out to the 20-yard line. Furman's defense received them for the first time here in the second half. They played outstanding football in that first half after... Furman's offense gives Nickel State a couple of turnovers, and all they can do with it is a couple of field goals. Here comes Yale Van Oy, the quarterback for the Colonels of Nickel State. Have not been in the Division I AA playoffs since 1996. Furman's been the six of the last seven years. And handoff going to Broderick Cole, and there's nothing in the middle. Nice job by Andrew Jones. The linebacker nice throw and puts the hammer on Broderick Cole. Andrew Jones saw Southern Conference and looked middle linebacker, leads the Furman Paladins in tackles. That time came off a block and just met Mr. Cole straight up in the hole. Bam, right there. Good form tackle by Andrew Jones. Gaines Burnett helped him out. 
No gain on the play. Second down, 10 yards to go. There's an interesting statistic since the first quarter. Furman has dominated total yardage in the second and so far here in the third. There's the option play. Uh, Furman smells it out and plays it very nicely. Gary Nelson comes up to put the hit on the pitch man. And that was Cal Jones. Really good job here by Nelson, who kind of feathers the quarterback, influences pitch, and then comes off and has the speed to make the tackle. So just where Furman likes to get this nickel state offense in third and long. And we've seen uh, Benoit hit a couple of passes to convert on third down in the first half, but still you like your odds if you're the Furman defense with nickel state in the third and nine. They've got those big tall receivers though. As Kenley Horton, 6'2, comes to the bottom of your screen. Austin Holmes on him. They're going to throw it, and the pass is going to be over the head of the intended receiver. And there's a flag. They're going to call interference on Furman. That was intended for the tight end, Jared Landrum. And he got mugged long before the ball got there at midfield. Just a breakdown in coverage by the Furman secondary. They just ran the tight end on a deep corner pattern. And somehow, he just got behind the secondary. You'll see it on the replay here. Furman secondary just has a just a, a bad breakdown. And Noe again just kind of throws the ball up, up in the air. And you can see Furman secondary. You see Thacker grab the receiver right there. You see it plain as day. And uh, Andrew just got in bad position, got bad, got beat at the last minute and going to give Nickel State a big first down at the 15 yard mark off. We're in Greenville, South Carolina, beside Paris Mountain on the campus of Furman University. Furman Paladins battling Nickel State on Chuck Cushion along with Gordon Higgins. Furman up 14 6, but Nickel State trying to counter punch here midway through the third quarter. First down 10. They put the ball at the 36-yard line after the penalty. And a handoff going to the fullback, Joseph Tobias, and he takes it out across the 45 to the 47. William Freeman makes a stop. So that interference call really got them going again. It sure did. What it does is completely changes field position, too, because Burma was looking to have the ball around midfield after the punt. But after the 15-yard mark off and out Tobias' big run on first down, they're in business. That was an 11-yard pickup for Joseph Tobias to the 47. First down, 10 yards to go. Run on the counter play. This is Tobias once again. He crosses the 50 down to the 45-yard line. So they run a trap play. And on the carry, it was Joseph Tobias who picks up about eight yards. It's going to be second down and two. I saw their big guard. Benjamin Gumbasi coming up waving his arms after that big, big gain and Tobias 11 rushes 54 yards so he's been the most effective runner a five Nicholas yards State a today. pop yep second down two yards to go he's an all Southland conference selection and off going to Tobias again needed two got three and it's first down at the Furman 42-yard line, Wesley Bray on the tackle along with Andrew Jones again. It's really unusual in that both the first and second pullback for Nickel State made an all-conference. You know, normally your backup is not going to be an all-conference selection, but these two guys kind of share the load, and they really roll up the yards coming in. They were second in the nation in rushing offense, 300 over 380 yards a game. First down, 10 yards to go. Ball at the Paladins 42-yard line. And off going to Tobias. He looked like a pinball that time as he crosses the 40. Goes down to the 38. He got bounced and turned completely around. Shelton Riley on the stop. If we can see that again, just watch him get popped and then do a 360. Here he comes. And it uh, looked like he was going to be held for no game, but he's so strong and so powerful, he bounced off William Freeman, who kind of hangs on, and then Shelton Riley finishes him off, but Tobias still got four yards. And it looked look like no game. Dambro to center. That tied up and bounced him backward. There's Tobias again, and he just got tripped up as he crosses the 30. That time to tackle by Andrew Jones. And another first down, mark it at the 29-yard line, so they're just running gashes in the Furman defense now. Yeah, they're running the fullback, Joseph Tobias, after that pass interference, 
penalty. He's carried the ball every time for Nichols State, and uh, now they're getting in serious scoring position inside the Furman 30. 14 to 6, Furman leads it, but Nichols State moving the football here. There's the option play. Van Oy will keep run over one tackler, and Backer hangs on, drags him down after about a six yard gain at 23. Good job here of Van Oy keeping on the option this time, making to this fullback coming out on the corner. You'll see the safety Thacker come up. It kind of runs through Thacker, but then Thacker still has enough to grab an ankle and bring him down. But still a big positive gain of six yards by Nickel State on first down. Second down, four yards to go. Ball inside the 25 at the 23-yard line. Tobias out of the lineup right now. And they're going to give it off to their fullback, Dwayne Jones. And Jones met by Jeff Bambro. Bambro, the junior from Greater Atlanta Christian, makes the stop. First time we've seen Dwayne Jones today, 5'9", 210 pound true freshman out of New Iberia, Louisiana. So third down, two yards to go, ball at the 21 yard line. They are definitely in four down territory here. Four out of 11 on the day for Nickel State in third down conversion. Goes Jones knocked down by Andrew Jones. No relation at the 23 yard line. Second time here in the third quarter, Andrew Jones with a big time hit. This time coming right up the gut. You'll see him just beat the center's block and just pow tattoos him right in the background. Get a different angle here. Jones beats the center block, comes through clean, and just knocks him down right there. Also, Gaines Burnett was in there. So it's fourth down, three yards to go, and once again. Nickel State will go for it. Essex Taylor in the lineup. They take out Wesley Bray. Yeah. And we got movement. And they're going to get a free play here. It's going to the end zone. Touchdown, Nickel State. They got a free play. Berman jumped off sides. No whistle blew. And they throw Man. the touchdown pass to Kenley Horton. Boy, something must have happened there because you saw Furman now defense. Flag down. We have a flag down. Furman defense did absolutely nothing. Now flag across the way. Evidently, the Furman defense must have thought they heard a whistle. That's why they never reacted. They didn't cover anybody. So let's see what happens here. Paladins just stood up. Offside on the defense. The penalty declined. Touchdown. Offsides on Furman. There was no whistle. Listen, see if you can hear a whistle here as the play unfolds. <laughs> no whistle. And there's the touchdown. You heard the whistle when they scored the touchdown. And so just like that, it's 14-12, and now Nickel State will go for two. Well, oh, that's getting one the easy way. For Yale Van Oy, that's only his second touchdown pass of the year. He's going to run the easy way. For Yale Van Oy, that's only his second touchdown pass of the year. He's going to run the here. Keeps, hit once, twice, and down he goes. Nice play by the Furman defense. William Freeman was over there. The pass covered 22 yards, Van Oy to Kenley Horton, but the two-point conversion failed. And with 2.02 left in the third, it's still Furman 14. Nickel State 12 on CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. Buckner, the senior center, he snaps the ball to Van Oy, and Kenley Horton takes off down the field. Those are the only three players who reacted, and it's six points for Nickel State. Yeah, three guys playing football on that play, all for Nickel State. The center, Stogner, as you said, Vanoy, the quarterback, and the wide out. Kenley Horton. Kenley Horton. And they played pitch and catch, and just like that, they got six points out of it. The try for points after fails, and so it's 14 12. Boy, Furman's defense has got to be discouraged. They apparently stopped them on a third down play when they got a pass interference, and then on fourth down, they give up the touchdown. Here's Middleton at the 15. And he'll get back to the 25 and not much more. He's knocked down. On the tackle, it was Cody Dimack, the backup offensive lineman. 10-yard return. 
So Engel Martin and company will go back to work late here in the third quarter. Minute 58 remaining. This quarter has flown by. Both teams really keeping it on the ground, except some big passes there. That big touchdown pass, and of course the pass interference keeping the drive alive. And now Furman's got to see if they can answer. Furman scored on their last two possessions. Cedric Gibson in the game at tailback. And here's your option play. Quick pitch, Gibson on the corner. He takes it after the 35-yard line, tripped up by Tony Edson, the strong safety. There's some other Division I AA scores from around the country right now. New Hampshire, the top seed in the 16-team playoff, taking care of business against the Red Raiders of Colgate. Cal, Cal Poly on the road at Montana in Helena leading the Montana Grizzlies. Eastern Illinois, the third seed winning, and Appalachian State at home against Lafayette, and Mountaineers winning early. Tedrick Gibson shaking up on that last play, kind of walking around with Bill Hedrick, the athletic trainer for Furman. And Derek Carter back in the tailback. Carter gets the football. And he picks up about four or five yards before he's thrown backward at the 38. Jamel Jack and the middle linebacker Corey Bavala on the stop. So I'll give him a gain of three, second down, seven yards to go. Furman trying to answer it. The Nickel State scoring drive just came a moment ago and one of the more bizarre plays you'll see in football is only the center quarterback in line out play on, out play on a down. Everybody else was standing there watching. Thinking the play was over. Motion man is Grant Brigham for Furman on second and seven. Quick pitch, and Carter's in trouble. He's going to lose the yard. That play did not develop properly. Then to make the stop was Marquise Lewis, the cornerback, along with Michael Young. So Furman's going to face third and long, and third and about eight from their own 37-yard line. There's Jay Thomas. He's got to be happy with that play. The counter-option play Furman's run very effectively here today. At that time, Nickel State all over. Possession down for the Furman Paladins as Ingle Martin will go out of the shotgun here. This could be the last play of the third quarter. Martin throws underneath, pass complete to Carter. 45 50, 45. Derek Carter takes it down to the 36 yard line, tackled by Tony Edison. And it's a first down for the Paladins. Good job here of Ingle Martin, who just sets in the pocket. And they're going to run out to his left by a little bit of time and see Derek Carter slip out into the flat, just outruns the linebacker. Here. Well, Corey Vavala, the linebacker against Derek Carter, who used to be a wide receiver before moving to tailback. That matchup is extremely favorable to the Furman Paladins. We're going to take a break. Fourth quarter's coming up. Furman clinging to a 14 to 12 lead over Nickel State on CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. In this, sometimes you read routes high, low. Sometimes you read them right to left. This one was read right to left. You saw him. Watch the eyes of David Ball here. He's right side now. He comes all the way back across the field to his guy David Ball, leaking down the sideline. I think he was stunned. That wow. He was that wide open. Furman with the lead and the football in Nickel State territory in this Division One AA playoff game. First rounder. Furman will have the ball. First down, 10 yards to go at the 36-yard line. Bobby Lamb getting ready for the fourth quarter. Cedric Gibson, who was injured early, late in the third quarter, back on the field, so that's good news for the Paladins. He's had a big day running football. He's at the top of the eye. Jerome Felton is a fullback under center. Engel Martin. That's Grant Brigham in motion, and they take the end around. There's Martin. And another good block by Kibbett. And out of bounds at the 30-yard line goes Engel Martin. Berman wanted a flag on that play. It looked like they hit Martin out of bounds again, but they're not going to get the flag. And Bobby Lamb's over there pointing to the spot, so you can watch it for yourself, and you be the judge. These Atlantic 10 officials are right. Nope. Looked like a good no call. Bobby Lamb still doesn't believe it. He is all over the linesman over there. You can see him having a, an intense conversation with A.G. Moore. He's still pointing, showing where the defender put his helmet <laughs> he's marking the spot for it. AG's not buying it though second down and two 
And here's Gibson. He's going to get snuffed at the line of scrimmage for no gain. So Furman will face third down and maybe a little less than two yards to go. Here's your statistical story through three quarters of play. The two turnovers setting up a couple of field goals for Nickel State in the first half. Time of possession still way out in front with Nickel State. Total yardage just about even. Furman, a little more balance in their attack, although they have run the football well today. Third down, about a yard to go. Martin gives it to the J train. He takes it to the 22-yard line. Jerome Felton tackled by Corey Vavala, the middle linebacker, but not before Felton picks up a first down at the 22. And Corey, you see Jerome Felton, J train coming off the sideline there for a little bit of a rest. As Patrick. I think he took a shot on his uh, his index finger that's broken too. That's yep. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. I'm sorry, Chuck. I was just going to say Ryan George Jr. to replace him. That's a trainer, Phil Hedrick, talking to Felton. And a handoff going up the middle is Joyce, I believe. Or is that Gibson? Gip, uh, Cedric Gibson. Cedric Gibson, the tailback on the air, takes it to the 20 again in two yards. He'll be second down and eight. Berman battled like this last year against James Madison, the eventual 1AA champion. Two traded punches in a close game and a long drive by James Madison late in the contest fell defeat for the Paladins. Furman favored coming into that game. Yep. The top two seed in the tournament. Yep. James Madison scored 28 seconds to go. And the end of round tackle back at the 28 yard line. Justin Stepp coming in to make the play was Joseph Ogletree, the free safety, and he would have none of the reverse. Nickel State really had this play just had it defended well. So several people out there ready to make the play if Ogletree doesn't. Ogletree, a good tackle right there, and I can step down way behind the line of scrimmage. So Furman have to have a big third down conversion right here to keep this drive going. Third down and 16 yards to go. The ball at the 28-yard line. That was a loss of eight yards on that play. So Martin will go from the shotgun here and run the spread offense. Going to throw up for the end zone. Has Brigham out there, and it's incomplete to Grant Brigham. Good coverage that time by the defensive back, Tommy Lee Brown. Brings up fourth down and 16 to go. Tommy Lee Brown, all-conference corner. Nice throw here by Angle Martin. He's going to put it right out there for Brigham for a chance to make the play. It looked like he got a little push right there at the end and actually hit off of Grant Brigham's hands. He had it momentarily, but couldn't come down with it. So he bring him in the hands, couldn't make the catch, so Furman's going to try a long field goal. This will be a 45-yard field goal attempt by Scott Beckler. His, his long for the season, his career long, was 47 yards against the Citadel last year. Older is Stone. The snap's not good, and the kick is not going to be good either. Somebody, yeah, somebody got a piece of that one coming up the middle. The number 10 for Tony Edison. The strong safety like he came up the middle and got a piece of it. We'll take a break. 12-12 remaining in this game. Berman still hanging on to a 14-12 lead over Nickel State. You're watching CSF. Nickel State as we head into the fourth quarter here. And for the first time since 1988, the Tennessee Volunteers aren't headed to a bowl game. Did the Vols end their season on a high note with a win over Kentucky? Cats Tennessee and the Kentucky Wildcats Monday at noon and 8 only on CSS. Well, a tough year for Philip Fulmer in the ball. Oh, it really has been. Nothing going right for them in the second part of the season. First down, 10 ball at the 28-yard line after the block field goal by Tony Edison. And this is the fullback. Joseph Tobias. Joseph Tobias on the carry. Tobias had been in the dressing room. He sprinted back down the sidelines and just got into the game on time. That was a gain of only two yards. Second down and eight yards to go. Ball at the 30-yard line. Haven't seen Broderick Coe, their starting fullback here the entire second half. Don't know if he had an injury at some point in the first half. Have not seen him. Danoy. 
will run the option. They quick pitch it out there to Cal Jones. And Jones gets on the corner a little bit, takes it out to the 33, a gain of three. So it's going to be third down here at about five yards to go. You see Cal Jones as he returns to the huddle out of Port Arthur, Texas. Another possession down for Nickel State. The last time they were in this situation, they threw a deep pass that uh, caught Furman pass interference. He kept the drive going, ended up scoring a touchdown off that drive. So let's see what happens here. Furman will go with a four-down lineman. Double slot set. Facing third and five. Handoff going to the fullback. Nothing there. Nice play by Andrew Jones, who's been everywhere today. Handoff went to Joseph Tobias, but a sure open field tackle by Andrew Jones. And he has been all over the place, as I said. See him coming right off a block right there with a good tackle on Tobias. And Jay Thomas waits a long time, but he does send his front team out there on fourth and one. It looks like Furman is going to get the football back here. Justin Stepp on to return it. One of the fine punt returners in the Southern Conference. Now he's only two for four today on fourth down conversions. So those two failures stick out in his mind a little bit. And here comes Sean Como to punt it. Como, the sophomore from New Iberia, Louisiana. And a whistle stops play. I think Nickel State's calling a timeout. Maybe they want to think about it. No, nope, the they, they did not beat the play clock, so back it up five yards, and Como will kick it again. Or will kick it from five yards deeper, I should say. They move it back to the 32-yard line. Furman has kept their first defense out there, thinking it may have been a fake. Now they're going to put their punt return out there, running them out there at the last minute. And they still had Justin step deep, even on fourth and one. Fourth down and six yards to go now. Low snap. No rush. Como sends a high float up to step at the 26. Justin Step. Oh, there he is at 32. Boy, he sure did. He like he was going to make a nice return. Somebody came up there, number 22 for Nickel State. That would Chris Turner made a good, good tackle. You can watch this one again. Step. Pretty good punt returner. He's averaging 8.3 yards per return this season. He seemed to look like he got a seam right there, and look at that tackle by turn. Turn doesn't make that tackle. Steps probably going to go another 20, 25 yards. So mark it at the 32-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go. Engel Martin and company going back to work, clinging to a two-point lead. Play action. Martin trying to buy some time and Grant Brigham did not come to him. He was had his back to the play up on the sidelines and Engel Martin I think was motioning for him to get open but Brigham didn't see him in time so Engel Martin settles for a gain of seven yards. That's pretty good freelancing. It really is and what Engel Martin does there a good experienced quarterback he does a little pump fake when he's way beyond the line of scrimmage because of course the defensive player doesn't know he's behind the line of scrimmage and is able to pick up a couple of more yards as a result of that. Martin out in Nashville, Tennessee. You see his numbers on the day. 44 yards rushing. Good day for him. Going to run the option this time. Pitch. And out of bounds. And they come right as they take Mays out of bounds and slam him into the bench area on the Furman side. Over there was Chris Turner, who just made that big hit on Justin Steph on a punt return a moment ago. And Turner's going to get flagged for 15 here. So Furman finally gets the late hit out of bounds. That time is Brandon Mays got mugged right there in front of the Furman coaches. So Furman in business after this mark off. They're going to be in pretty good shape. After the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Number 22 on the defense, 15 yards, first down. We got to watch this again. Brandon Mays with the football. He was not in very good pitch relationship there with Engel as he was right on top of him and there's the tackle out of bounds. Really a good play by Turner uh, playing the option but then he didn't let go with the whistle and thus he drew the penalty. So the 15 yard penalty moves the ball into Nickel State territory at the 44 yard line. This is a really big drive for the Furman offense with 10 minutes to go in the ball game up by only two points. High formation. Felton is the pullback. 
Mays, the eye back. Felton's number is called, and he takes it to the 39. Jerome Felton on the carry. Felton on before that carry, 19 yards and nine carries. He hasn't had a, a big day rushing the football, but that time he had a nice five-yard gain on first down. Nothing fancy about it either, just running between the tackles, putting his head down. Nickel State penalties now, three of them on the day for 25 yards, and that was a big one. The 15-yarder for personal foul. That's Mays on the carry once again. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, not much more. And making the play was Henry Johnson, the cornerback. That time, the Nickel State defense really played the Furman stretch play very well. Third down four. Ball at the 38-yard line. Martin gets a play from the sidelines. Yeah, yeah. Furman on the day, five out of ten on third downs. One of the top teams in the conference and the nation in third down conversion. Play action, quick pitch. Here's May. Outside he goes. Won't make it. First down marker as he gets dropped at the 37, a one-yard gain. That was an excellent play by Tony Edison, a strong safety. It really is. When this play comes out of the shoot on the counter option, it looks like he's got something going, but Brad Bell, the tight end for Furman, can't stay with his block, and that lets the strong safety, Tony Edison, come off and make the tackle. So Furman looks like on fourth and two, they're going to go for it here. And their biggest conversion so far in the ball game coming up. Martin doesn't have much time on the play clock here. They're down to nine seconds as he brings him to the line of scrimmage. Bell is the tight end. He lines up on the right side at the bottom of your screen. And now Furman must call a timeout. Yeah, Bobby Lamb was. We'll take a break. 8.04 left. Furman facing fourth down when we come back. They lead it by two on CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. Last time on fourth and short, they went to Jerome Felton. He delivered. So, second time today for him to line up to go for it on fourth down. Ingram Martin under center. Going to run the option. Peeps. And a bad pitch. And it's recovered by Tony Edison. And the ball will go over to Nickel State. Ingram Martin still down. As he really got popped that time by Chris Turner. Not a good decision by Ingram Martin that time. Pitched the ball way late to Derek. Derek Carter, Carter had no chance. Carter, they're lucky here that Nickel State didn't pick this ball up and run it. And he got up in there and made a bad pitch and Edison came on to it. So ball at the 39 yard line, first down and 10 yards to go. Third turnover of the day now for Furman in this ball game. Nickel State has yet to turn it over. So let's just see how big that third one is for Furman. Going to give it to his fullback. That's Joseph Tobias. Joseph Tobias gets about three on the play out to the 42-yard line. Tobias, 5'11", 220 pounds of junior from Tangapoa, Louisiana, transferred to Nickel State from Southwest Mississippi Community College and was newcomer of the year in the Southland Conference. Had a big year for the Colonels. Herman looking to get a stop. There's the option play. Vanoy keeps and he crosses the 45 out to about the 46 yard line. Paladins close it down pretty quickly, but it's going to be third down and three here. On the play, Wesley Bray. Vanoy doesn't have tremendous speed, but he does make really good decisions and he gets positive yardage even when it looks like there's nothing happening. So just like the last time Nickel State had the ball, they're third down and, and relatively short distance to go, only about three yards. Urban fans trying to make a little noise, but they had a lot of turkey yesterday. It's slow to get into this one. It's a big play. Third down, a little more than three yards to go. Hand off going to the fullback, and that's Tobias. He has a first down and more as he crosses the 50 down to the 46-yard line. Jeremy Blocker and Gary Nelson make the stop. Getting laid a little late down the fourth quarter. 6.40 clock rolling after the reset the chains, and Nickel State with all three of their timeouts. Furman with only one. Nickel State only down by two here as they're getting close to the field goal range. Bobby Lamb looking on pensively. I tell you, he's seen this before with James Madison last year. 
If the state's going to call a timeout here and talk it over as Van Oy heads for the sidelines. 6.22 remaining. Furman clinging to a two point lead, 14 to 12. One of eight games today in Division I AA football. And here's some of the other scores. New Hampshire, no problem with Colgate. Montana, Cal Poly, even up in the second quarter. Upset brewing there with Southern Illinois in the second quarter. Appalachian State in trouble. They're the second seed in the second quarter. And later on today, Georgia Southern will take on Texas State. And Richmond will meet undefeated Hampton. The winner of that game gets the winner of this game. Absolutely. No. Talking about the way this game is unfolding here last year against James Madison on this field. Furman missed a field goal late, actually had it blocked with about seven minutes to go. James Madison took over, drove all the way down the field, scored with 28 seconds to go, kicked their point to win the game 14 to 13. So Bobby Lamb right now hoping his defense can stand up here and make a stand and stop. As Yogi says, Bobby hoping it's not deja vu all over again. Vanoy going for the bundle on third and long. The pass is knocked away by Austin Holmes. Correction on first down, he threw for the end zone, and Austin Holmes back to knock it down nicely. The pass intended for Kenley Horton, who caught that touchdown pass a while ago. He's going to try to get Horton one-on-one -on -one with Holmes, which he does. Not a bad throw by Benoit, but really good defense by Austin Holmes, who battles man-to-man -man on him. You can see him right there. It's another jump ball situation this time. Furman wins the jump ball. Well, Austin Holmes only 5'8", Kenley Horton 6'2", so... Time for the mismatch. There's a handoff going to Tobias. He crosses the 45, takes it to the 42, gets about five yards on the play. Wesley Bray makes the tackle for Furman. Again, and what would uh, for a lot of people be a definite passing situation, second and ten, not for this team running the football. Second, we mentioned they're the second leading rushing team in the nation with about 380 yards a game and another big third down coming up here for Nickel State. Third and six, ball at the 43-yard line. You see the numbers on Tobias for the day, closing in on 100 yards. Double slot, Van Oy, under center. They give it to... Nope, they keep it. I believe the quarterback kept it. Yale Van Oy is tackled by Jeremy Blocker. And it's going to be fourth down and about one for Nickel State. They're going to mark it at the 39-yard line. It will be fourth and two here. And with 5.18 on a turning clock, decision time for that man, Jay Thomas. Now I think they're going for it. They didn't think long about it. Nope. Fourth down, two yards to go. Gail Van Oy, what he's done on going to be fourth down and about one for Nickel State. They're going to mark it at the 39-yard line. It will be fourth and two here. And with 5.18 on a turning clock, decision time for that man, Jay Thomas. Now I think they're going for it. They didn't think long about it. Nope. Fourth down, two yards to go. Gail Van Oy, what he's done on the day. offensive line and they give it off in there to Tobias and he picks up the first down I think at the 38 yard line we'll check the spot it all depends on where the knee hit down so this is going to be right at the sticks they're going to maybe measure this Chuck Austin Holmes thinks that Berman has it Boy, I think he's about what? maybe about a yard shy it's going to be right there at it this depends on left foot right foot man this ball is so at the close. 38 yard line and he needed almost the 37. It's going to be the nose of the football one way or the other. Either it's going to touch the nose or miss it. That's my prediction anyway. And about a yard. <laughs> your, your eyes are horrible, Gordon. <laughs> Missed it by a yard. I didn't say how far off the nose it would be. I just said the nose. I said the nose would be a factor. So. Berman will take over with 4.52 left. Paladins leading by two points. These two teams trying to advance to the second round of the 1AA playoffs. You get to watch it again here. Give it to the guy who's had the best game so far for them. Goes to Tobias, comes right off, and Andrew Jones jumped over a blocker, knocked him off just enough. You see him jumping the pile right there. And then Gary Nelson finished him off. Yep, Gary Nelson played that one very nicely. Here is Derek Carter. 
Carter splits two defenders, crosses the 45 out to about the 46-yard line. Now tackled on the play by Chris Turner. But Trey Robertson got up. He thought he was held. He was com really complaining to the official on the far sideline, but no flag. Really? They mark it at the 46-yard line, a gain of eight yards, second down and two. All right, Chuck, really positive yardage you have for Furman on first down. Here in this point of the game, every first down worth about two minutes, and the clock definitely a factor now. 420 and counting. Nickel State with two timeouts left. Jay Thomas. His team has won five in a row coming into this. They overcame the effects of two hurricanes. Katrina and Rita to make this playoff. Handoff Falcon up the middle he goes. At the 45, he spins ahead to the 41-yard line. First down, Furman. Boy, Jerome Felton, the J-train that time, was about one step from going all the way, but a big first down for Furman. His biggest run of the ball game. Keep fitting it at the J-train. Eventually, he'll make a play like this for you. See Patrick Covington, the all-conference guard, leading the way, number 64, J-train, into the secondary for a big first down for Furman. Now we're under four minutes in the game. Free safety, Joseph Ogletree had to make the stop. You see Felton's numbers on the day. The gain at 13 yards for Felton. First down, 10. And off, going to Carter. Carter finds a seam at the 35. Spins ahead. They stand him up. They try to strip the ball, and Carter will go down at the 32-yard line, hanging on to the football. Thing about Derek Carter that makes him such a tremendous runner is just his strength. Derek Carter. A big guy. Derek is 6'1, 213. He runs. Some people think you mentioned Chuck used to be a wide out. One of the smartest moves Bobby Lamb made was he and when he was working with the offense at that time, put him at tailback. And uh really paid dividends for Furman. First down for the Paladins, ball at the 31 yard line. The pickup was 11 yards for Derek Carter. You see the rushing yardage. Nickel State way under their 383 yards per game average. There's Felton banging ahead to the 25. He got about seven on that play. Brian Pyle, the defensive end from Gonzalez, Louisiana, made the stop. And slow to get up is Michael Young, the other defensive end. He got hit by a train. By the J train. He's favoring his right arm and right elbow. You can watch it again here as the play unfolds. Felton just straight ahead, smack you in the mouth football. Well, that was a great block by 86 to Brad Bell, the tight end who came down on the tackle and linebacker and got, got him in the secondary. Michael Young hanging on for the tackle. We'll take a break back after this. Firm it up on CSS. Along with Gordon Higgins, we are late in this ball game. Two minutes, 51 seconds. As the Furman Paladins lead the Nickel State Colonels 14 to 12. Furman with the ball, facing second down and five yards to go at their own 25-yard line. Rather, at the Nickel State 25-yard line. Defensive end Michael Young for Nickel, Nickel State, who was injured, got up and left the field under his own power, so we might see him back in this moment. High formation. Derek Carter still in there at tailback. Going to motion Russ and hand it to Felton again. Felton struggled ahead for about three yards to the 22-yard line. Tackle on the play by Tony Edison, the strong safety. Jay Thomas calls a timeout for Nickel State, trying to save as much clock as he can. They have, looks like they may have one left. 2.28 to go. And nothing fancy about that. This is Jerome Felton off tackle. So a big third down and two coming up there. You see Jay Thomas wondering what his options are right now as it's getting late in the ball game. Furman trying to go to 10 and 2 on the year. Nickel State came into this game 6 and 3, winners of five in a row. Of course, the winner of this game will meet the winner of Richmond and Hampton. Those two teams out of Virginia playing later on this afternoon. Hampton, the number three seed in the tournament. They're undefeated. They're the only undefeated team in the playoffs. They're out of the MIA. Richmond out of the Atlantic 10. Richmond, they're another team. They are talking about Nickel State getting hot, winning five in a row to get here. Uh, Richmond's fighters also that way. They won seven in a row to get, to get to the NCAA playoffs this year. They're like a carbon copy of James Madison a year ago because James Madison came into the playoffs unseated. They ran the table. They went straight through the field and defeated some of the uh, higher seeds and won the championship. Including Furman, who was the number two seed. And James Madison made history in the process, the first team to ever go on the road throughout the playoffs and win it all. Win Won it them all on the road, that's right, great point. 
third down and a couple. Here's Belton. Belton has the first down at the 19-yard line. Jerome Belton takes it into the red zone where Furman has done a good job today. On the tackle once again, it was Tony Edison and Chris Turner. And, with, and Nickel State now with only one timeout left can only stop it. And I think they just said now, Chuck, they've used their last timeout, so Nickel State can't stop the clock again. So Furman just about can milk this thing and go home for the victory today. Two minutes, 22 seconds remaining. Furman Paladins under coach Bobby Lamb, one and two in the playoffs, so he's trying to get back to 500. They would be seeking their 10th victory of the season, and coach Lamb, an excellent start as head coach of the Paladins. He would be 34 and 14 in his career with Furman, and three of those losses coming to Division I-A clubs. He lost to Bobby Johnson in Vanderbilt to start the season, or start his career as head coach three years ago. Then he lost to the Clemson Tigers, 33 to 14, and last year, Pittsburgh and Furman went to overtime before the Panthers prevailed in OT, and Pittsburgh goes on to play in a BCS Bowl, the Fiesta Bowl last year. Absolutely, very exciting game for Furman up there at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, a game that saw both teams just building up all kind of number on offense. Now, Furman. Furman, Furman had a 31-17 lead in the fourth quarter and let it get away. So first down 10, ball at the 19-yard line. Guess who carries the ball down to the 14-yard line, a gain of five for Jerome Felton. He gets up a little slowly. He's got to be gassed. Patrick Covington leading the charge. A nice block by the right guard for the Paladin. Here you see Jerome Felton. We've been calling the J train. That's the nickname that his teammates gave him because he is like a locomotive when he gets behind that offensive line running the football, especially late in ball games like this. He really punishes defensive lines. They put the ball down at the 15-yard line, gain of four, second down, six yards to go. Nickel State out of timeouts, clock rolling, a minute 44 remaining. Here's Felton once again. They just, just keep pounding on it. Here is your Chick-fil-A Cherrydale Point player of the game for his efforts today, Andrew Jones, a middle linebacker from Birmingham, Alabama, 16 tackles on the day. Also in on that big tackle a moment ago when they tackled Joseph Tobias on fourth down and about two. Let's he go, make oh. that tackle. He's made so many good plays today for Furman. He also made the play inside the one in the first half. Stopping Tobias at the one foot line. On fourth down, and that really turned it around for Furman early in the game. Has a third down here for Furman. Third down, about three yards to go. Martin will hand it to Felton once again. This time he won't get there. Gets knocked down at the 10. He's going to be about a yard shy of the first down. So if you're Bobby Lamb, do you try to put the kick the field goal here? Do you just run it again? Here he is, Jerome Felton. Yeah. That would take the field goal out of play for Nickel State. But Furman wants to run all this clock they can. There's 16, 15, 14 seconds now on the play clock. 38 seconds on the game clock, as you can see. Furman's going to run it all the way down and take a timeout and talk about it. It's going to be fourth down and one yard to go. Scott Beckler is standing way back at the back of the sidelines. He's yeah. behind Coach Lamb by about five yards, so apparently Furman's going to go for it. Yeah, and I think this is a good call by Coach Bobby Lamb and Furman with only 26 seconds to go. Thinking here, if you kick the field goal, so many things can go wrong. They can be blocked in return for a touchdown. Even if you make the field goal, you then give them the opportunity for a big kickoff return. And uh, just here, if you don't make it, they've got to go probably about 70, 70 yards to be in field goal range with, with only about 25 seconds on the clock. So Berman right here looking to maybe just ice it with a big first down or make it real, real difficult for Nickel State with less than 20 seconds to go in the ball game when they get it back if they hold it. Well, for my money, I'm giving it to number 45 here and see if he can pick up a yard. You go with your best against their best shot. Yep. 26 ticks on the clock. Furman that far from advancing to the second round of the NCAA Division 1-2A playoffs. 
Yeah, I look for some, what I call a safe play, nothing fancy like a pitch on the corner, which we saw earlier almost ended a disaster for Furman. I look for something. Run inside here, probably, as you said, Chuck, best bet is Jerome Felton right up the gut. Hand off Felton. There we go. He plunges in there. First down, Furman. First down, Paladins, and that's going to do it. Day train, locomotive, gets it done for the Furman Paladins. And Furman can start celebrating now because they're going to advance to the second round. And that game will be played at the site of the winner of tonight's game between Richmond and Hampton University. That's already been decided. Furman will not have to run another play. The celebration can begin for there's J Train. He was just so big for Furman on that last drive, getting all the tough yards inside. He got all the yards. Derek Carter carried it a couple of times. Bobby Lamb making his way to the far sideline. He'll shake hands with Jay Thomas as Nichols State will end its season right now with a 6-4 record. Furman goes to 10-2, and, and the Paladins will advance to the second round of the NCAA Division I AA playoffs with his 14-12 victory over Nichols State. We'll take a 60-second break and then come back. You're watching college football on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. The winner of either third seed in Hampton or Richmond, a game to be played later on today. On the other side, we just showed you Eastern Illinois and Southern Illinois. The winner there gets the winner of the Appalachian State Lafayette game a little later on. Now, you've coached one double A, you've coached one A. What's the difference in terms of how you approach the playoff system and how you gear your team up for that as opposed to, say, you win your game and, and you've got a month before a bowl game? Well, you got to start uh, cutting back your practices uh, way early in the season, about the seventh game, because you only get to dress 56 guys in a 1AA game, and that takes a toll on your special teams because you're used to using some second team, third team guys. So your first team guys have to play special team. And as we mentioned before, the travel starts to be part of the whole process and the fresher teams usually win down the stretch injuries critical you got to stay healthy yeah if you keep winning you can why you wind up playing 15 16 games 15 Sundays. games but you know that you know the only difference is for a bowl game you're practicing on saturday instead of playing a game that's if you qualify for a bowl game a lot of teams in 1a try to get themselves bowl eligible on this saturday we'll take a peek at a couple of those teams when we return Maryland and NC State both going at it at 5-5. Five and five. Bottom of the hour, it's Georgia Southern and Texas State. That's Barrett Neely. Counted for a total of 25 touchdowns this season. His Bobcats will take on Georgia Southern in just a few. Furman's offense comes back on the field. And at that point, Jerome Felton takes over the J train. He locomotes all the way down inside the 10-yard line when the game ends. And Furman survives. And Bobby Lamb will tell you, that's the name of the game at this point. A lot of people will be surprised at the score, thinking maybe Furman would have dominated this thing, put a lot of points up, but it didn't happen. But Bobby Lamb and the Paladins will take it. It's survive in advance. And Andrew Jones, we talked about him, 16 tackles on the day, and uh, he just did it all, as we said, made a huge stop inside the one-yard line on fourth down early in the game and then made a big stop late in the game on fourth down again to give Furman the football back. A lot of credit has to go to defensive coordinator Steve Wilson and his coaches in the defensive package they put together today knowing that Nichols State was going to run the football and run it a lot. Second leading rushing team in the nation right behind Georgia Southern. They saw the Georgia Southern tape. They saw Georgia Southern had about 400 yards rushing against Furman. They probably thought they had a good game plan today but Andrew Jones and company just stepped up time and time again, made big plays when they had to, thus Furman survived.